Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to FFW Breakdown. I'm your host, Christopher Billings, being joined tonight by my brand new broadcast partner, JDL, who uh, his first and last name cannot be disclosed for uh, legal reasons right now. Welcome to the broadcast booth, JDL. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Not so much sitting next to you, but being on the show in general. It's great. Well, hey, I'm, I'm glad that you're excited to be here. And on your screen right now, ladies and gentlemen, coming up a little bit later tonight in the main event, we have the Breakdown Rumble. This is a 30-man over-the-top rope elimination. 30 uh, men, only one man can win. I would beat them all if I was in it. <laughs> uh, and just in case everybody isn't aware, uh, JDL is an active competitor. Uh, in another company right now, which is actually under the TVP 2K umbrella. Would you like to disclose that with anybody, or would you rather just keep your secrecy? I'll keep my secrecy the way it is. I like what's, what's going on with me now. Okay, fair enough. And uh, we're getting ready to get this night underway, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lot of matches to get to. Uh, we've got the Adrenaline Championship that's going to be on the line a little bit later tonight. Oh, first, we have the Tag Team Championships that are going to be on the line. We've got Anthony Guerrero Jr. and Brickwall TCO teaming up against the Haynes brothers, Ryan and Drew. This is going to be uh, a huge tag team match, especially for TCO and the Haynes brothers, who all four of these men are also in the, the breakdown rumble later tonight. Some of these wrestlers are competing more than once tonight. And, uh, you know, since you are an active in ring competitor, do you have any advice? or the wrestlers backstage that may be competing later tonight having to compete again, again later on in the night. Well, what I would do is I would let, you know, I don't know how to explain it to you because you're not a wrestler. So, you know, I would pace myself, not try to wear myself out so much, you know, try to keep the match under control. You understand? I, I, definitely, I definitely understand, and I know uh, you're brand new to this broadcast booth, and I know uh, that they just kind of put G in this position, but the Haynes brothers have been a thorn in the side of TCO for the past two months. You know, this has been back and forth between these these two factions, so to speak. Uh, the Haynes brothers, they all hail from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, you know, Anthony Rowe Jr. from Grand Rapids, the son of Die Hard, and Rick Wall from Indianapolis, Indiana. Rick Wall, the, the powerhouse of TCO. And uh, I, I have under good authority that you're a very big fan of, uh, of Die Hard. Who told you this? I have my resources. It's called uh, the Wrestling Insider. Listen, I, I work at a company where the janitor, the janitor's room has a nightclub in it, and I don't know who the hell that is. But let me tell you this. If I was a tag team champion, I would take you those right off those guys. Well, let me ask you this. How do you, like, I mean, I know that you're a big fan of Die Hard. I think we all realize, what? because you totally avoided the question about being a fan of Die Hard. I'm not a fan of Die Hard. I, I'm sure you're not, as our, as our female ring announcer, getting ready to come to the ring. As you see TCO standing in the ring here, showing their fist, showing their uh, their unity as a team. You know, I'm gonna, I'm hoping that TCO is able to pull this out tonight. I'm definitely, look, I'm pulling for them. They look impressive as a tag team, don't get me wrong, but if I went in there, they wouldn't have a chance. We wouldn't have a chance as we're waiting for our, uh, waiting for our ring announcer here. They're lucky I'm injured. That's it. That's the only thing. I'm Introducing right the challengers, weighing in at a combined weight of 497 pounds, the Hades Brothers! And the champions, weighing in at a combined weight of 502 pounds, the Chosen Ones! As you, as you heard from the ring announcer there, we're getting ready to get this matchup underway. The Tag Team Championships are on the line here. The Haynes Brothers versus TCO. Predictions? Because I'm predicting I, I, a win I, for TCO. I got the Haynes Brothers. You're, you're pulling for the bad guys here. You're pulling for the guys yeah. that jump people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, later tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we do have the 30-man breakdown rumble match. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's a huge match. It's a, a lot of... Um, tech, usually there's conspiracy theories based on that match. There's always some kind of negative fallout after that. But as you saw in the ring there, a brick ball went for a shoulder attack on Ryan Haynes, but was unable to knock him down. See, the chosen ones, they look like they never said a cuss word in their life. 
Well, I, I think we know that's not true because I mean we've we've per, I've personally heard Die Hard cuss up a storm on the show before. I, I've I've seen it. I've heard it. I've been on the receiving end of it. Oh, of course, of course you're gonna you know kiss his butt because you're the corporal kiss butt. You know. Well, JDL, I just want you to know that I am the not only the voice of FFW, but I'm also the voice of PWI. I'm also the voice of Fractal Wrestling Entertainment. I am the voice of TPP 2K in general. And look at the strength of Brick Wall, 281 pounds, lifting up 260 pounds from the ground in a dead lift. Like I'm not, I'm not taking it away from from the chosen ones. I mean, Brick Wall, he is one hell of a competitor. I mean, he he has a lot of potential in this business, but. The Haynes brothers over here, I mean, look at them. They are, they're God's gift to wrestling. I mean, look at, look at them, look at that. Look what he's doing right now, look at them. Watch, 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 watch. Boom, and that's his career. I don't know about his career. I mean, Brick Hall's been through uh, some, some hellacious battles into the cover here. Two, and a two count for Ryan Haynes on Brick Wall. And for those of you that haven't been keeping track here, uh, Ryan Haynes, uh, the, the bald gentleman who remains the blonde haired yeah. youngest brother. And uh, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, you can join the conversation tonight at FFW Call. Use the hashtag FFW Breakdown to be heard. It's all about getting that plug in there, JDL. It's all about getting that plug. You and your plugs, that, that's the problem with your commentary. You plug too much. You care too much. You have to focus what really matters inside that ring right there in the square circle. Well, right now, in inside the square circle, Brick Wall is definitely pacing himself on Ryan Haynes. Ryan Haynes, he needs to he needs to tag in Drew. He needs to tag in the smaller tag team partner and get him in the match. This way they can maybe turn this around. I, I re I'm really confident in, in the team that I picked, the right winning team, the team that should win. Ooh, and a big elbow there from, from Ryan Haynes. But again, they're they're dishing it out to me. Yeah, it's this is this has been a great a great start to a show so far. I'm I'm not taking that away from them. <laughs> what what is happening? Ooh, look at that. Shades of yeah. shades of true TCO using yeah. any advantage that they can get. Cheating. Something I'm not a fan of. I've never cheated ever in the match. I've never used any kind of you know for object or well, let's cheat look at moves. look at this replay here. I mean look at this is earlier in the match, Brick Wall picking up Ryan Haynes from the ground here. Look at this. Physical wow, strength. Physical strength. Look at that. 261 60 plus pounds slim on the back of his neck, his head, and on his back as a Brick Wall, you know, back in the ring as the legal man here now working on Drew, but Abel and Ryan saving saving his, his brother there from what would have been a lot of pain from Brick Wall. Yet again, like I said, I've never cheated. So, you know, for them to do that, that's that's really, you know, uh, what is that word? Classless? I wouldn't say I wouldn't say classless. I, I think in that case, oh and a big kick there from, from Drew Haynes, but like I like I was gonna say, I think it, it just showed their tenacity as a tag team. I mean we're talking about a tag team that has been together throughout years. I mean, Anthony Guerrero Jr., he saw all the greats through TCO. You know, like he had his father, you know, when Brick Wall first was coming onto the scene and various oh. others. And into the cover here, One, two, two, and almost a three count, but oh, wow. Brick Wall able to kick out at the very last moment. He didn't get his shoulder that far off the mat, but he was able to kick out. And again, Drew right back into the cover here. One, One two. This is... This is this is so suspenseful, you know. I'm literally on the edge of my seat because you smell so bad. <laughs> as you as you see here, Drew Haynes firing on all cylinders against Brick Wall. And uh, up next, we do have the Adrenaline Championship matchup. And one of the the notice the most noticeable features about Brick Wall is when he strikes you, it's like getting hit by a cinder block, you know, because. Uh, when he was young, when he was in his teenage years, uh, early 20s, he was he did a lot of Golden Glove boxing, and uh, you know Brick Wall, a huge, huge asset. Oh, and a big right hand there for for Brick Wall. Like I was saying, a big asset to TCO into the cover with the far leg hook. One, two, and as you saw, Ryan Haynes saving it at the very last moment. You see, what I would have done is I would have just you know got in there. Uh, did a couple moves, bing, bang, boom, headlock, wrench it. This match would be over. 
I don't know. I mean, I mean, for you, maybe JDL, you think that that would be that easy, but these are top yeah. top tier wrestlers. As Brick Wall, big spear there, and you only see that once in a while. And Brick Wall here thinks that he might have Drew put away. I think that this matchup might be over. And Brick Wall. Yeah, what's, in, what, what's happening right now? Brick Wall in the color Junior was trying to get into the ring, but the referee caught him off guard there, allowing Ryan Haynes to get in and break up the pin, keeping this matchup going. And so far, I mean, Drew has been on the receiving end of the uh, proverbial butt kicking from Brick Wall. Brick Wall is a strong man, I will tell you that. He plays a strong man's game, and, you know, he's no one to mess with when it, when it comes down to it. You know, and, and I could almost say the same thing about Anthony Jr. I mean, you know, it's, and I've said this before, but one of the, the biggest downfalls for Anthony Jr. is he's too big to be considered an adrenaline weight class wrestler, and he's yeah. too small to be considered a heavyweight. And in large fault, I think that's because of his father, you know, because Die Hard is a heavyweight now, but he wasn't always a heavyweight, but he was always a bigger, smaller guy. So I think it might have just been a hereditary gene. Uh, compared to most of the adrenaline wrestlers, Junior may not look that big as tag team work again by TCO, but Junior may not look that big compared to others. But he, he outshines body mass-wise compared to most of uh, the adrenaline wrestlers and some of the, the actual heavyweight wrestlers. As Brick Wall here working on uh, Drew on the outside and Junior going uh, high-flying over there and Ryan. This is, this is where the match has broken down here. Uh, neither of the legal men are in the ring, uh, and they're, they're both fighting. The Haynes brothers... How, how, how long has Junior been in the business for? Uh, I believe that Anthony Guerrero Jr., if I, if I remember correctly, made his debut in 2012. Wow, so he's, you know, he's, he's, still, he's still in his rookie years, you would say, would you think? I, I would definitely say that, but I would also like to think that he has years of experience working you know, with his dad, with right. you know, Brick Wall and, and various other people that were in TCO. And that big choke toss there from Ryan to Brick Wall on the outside as Drew Haynes working a submission over there on Anthony Guerrero Jr. And uh, right now, uh, this is the game that the Haynes brothers like to do. They like the numbers game. They like to keep it where the tag teams cannot work cohesively together as Brick Wall firing back on the outside and Drew coming back into the game. This is, a, this is an amazing matchup. You know, they're not that big when they're that close to you, you know? Like, I think I'm a little bit bigger than all these guys. I don't know about Brick Wall. He's about 281 pounds, and no offense, JDL, but you look like you're maybe 230 pounds. Maybe. I mean, I'm not a big guy myself, but, yeah, I don't think you're bigger than Brick Wall or Ryan. I think that as Junior here... Keeping it going. And Junior, yes. what a punch. that's what I'm saying as Junior here calling Drew to his feet. And oh, that seated jawbreaker. That might be it, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan going after Brick Wall on the outside here. Junior hooking the far leg. Brick Wall firing back. One, two, three. And that is all she wrote in TCO using their experience to defeat the Haynes brothers tonight. I taught him that move. You, you taught him that move? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you know, that's okay. Watching my matches. I'm sure that they were. I'm sure they were watching your matches very, very close. All right. That's right. As, uh, as we're... <coughs> Excuse me. Congratulations again goes out to, uh, to TCO. It was a hard-fought victory for them. They've got to compete later on tonight in the breakdown room. You know, and, and that's that's a pretty big deal. I, if I don't say so myself, that's a that's a really big deal, to be honest. And uh, they've got a lot to look forward to. I mean, just imagine one of these guys win the Breakdown Rumble. They'd be facing Jerry Graham for the FFW Championship at FFWX. And uh, that'll be the worst thing in the world if that happens. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, backstage we have Elizabeth Sims standing by with uh, the leader of TCO with Die Hard and hoping to get a few words in here with Die Hard. She says that this is the first time she's gotten to stand next to Die Hard. So uh, let's, we're going to cut back there in just a few moments over to Elizabeth. Um, apparently, Die Hard has a prediction for tonight's breakdown rumble. So we're going to cut backstage in just a few moments here over to Elizabeth. Uh, standing by with, with the legendary, the one, the only Die Hard.
Die Hard, it's a pleasure to be standing next to you. Tonight you were involved in the Breakdown Rumble with the entry spot of number 26. Are you predicting a win tonight? You know, normally I'd guarantee a win on my behalf, but there is no guarantee tonight. It's not just me that's vying for an opportunity to fight for the FFW Championship. There's 29 others out there as well. Can I do it? I sure hope so. After all, I, I am diehard and that's what I do. I win when it counts the most. And, and strong words from Die Hard there, uh, making his claim in the Rumble tonight. I, I don't see the most strong words, honestly. They just seem like normal words. I don't know what strong is to you, Billy. It, it's, it's Christopher Billings. <laughs> Lady. Right. That's what Ladies I said. and gentlemen, it is now time for the FFW <laughs> Adrenaline Championship match. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Adrenaline Championship matchup. We've got uh, Calvin Carter III getting ready to take on Takamuri for the FFW Adrenaline Championship. Takamuri currently on a six-month title defense team. And, and Calvin Carter looking to, uh, to maybe change it. Takamuri, that's his name? That is his name, Takamuri. He has defended that championship for six months. And uh, he's getting ready to take on Calvin Carter the third. Uh, you know, Calvin Carter uh, hailing from Hollywood, California. And Takamuri from the Boy of Japan. Very he's a very interesting character. I I'm going to tell you this now. Well, you know, and one thing about Calvin, Calvin Carter is he, he tends to try to insult his opponent, as you see uh, Carter wearing a Japanese themed attire tonight. Uh, you know, talking very from the boy of Japan. So, kind of trying to play the mental game there, trying to get into the head of Takamori, which, you know, in, in theory isn't a bad idea, but one thing that, you know, Calvin Carter doesn't realize is Takamuri's no joke. I, I've seen him end title defense matches in less than two minutes. Interesting. Very interesting. And, and Calvin Carter, they're brushing off his, his opponent tonight, the, the reigning champion, uh, the adrenaline champion. You know, and, uh, speaking of championships, JDL. Yeah. Um, do you hold any wrestling championships at all? Well, that's what you ask. I am the world champion, so I don't know what show you're watching. Oh, because I, I know for a fact that tomorrow night, over in PWA, it is PWA Adrenaline, the, the debut uh, pay-per-view event, and you're not even booked on the card. So. What? Yeah, yeah, you're not even booked on the card. I did. You know what? We're not gonna have this talk right now, okay? Okay. I just, I just wanted to let you know that you're not the world champion. It's very unprofessional of you. Introducing the challenger, weighing in at 222 pounds, from Hollywood, California, Calvin Carter. And introducing the champion. Weighing in at 220 pounds from Nagoya, Japan, Taka Muri. And ladies and gentlemen, this matchup is for the Adrenaline Championship. Taka Muri handing the referee his championship, maybe for the last time, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have a prediction of, of who's going to win this matchup tonight? Yeah, it's a, it's a very, uh, you know what, I'm going I'm to play this one by ear here, you know. I don't I don't have a prediction on this one. This one's gonna be hard. These are both young competitors ready to lose to me. <laughs> you know, and one thing that stands out to me is that like you said, these are both young, hungry competitors. Calvin Carter definitely has all the skills to be successful in this business. He doesn't have the greatest attitude towards other wrestlers. But at the same time, he does have the ability to back it up as a beautiful standing drop kick, drop kick there from Carter as a Takamiri quick dunk, duck up a little by a drop kick of his own. You know, for, for a guy that's very educational, you do not listen very well. I said ready to lose to me. 
you know, you missed that part when we were talking. Oh, I, 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 just, I heard that. I heard it when you said that they were ready to lose you. I would love to see you get in the ring with one of these guys. Yeah, you know what? Uh, last week during my match, I uh, tweaked my shoulder, and I, I, I've had a hard time moving it since then, so I can't get up there right now, but you know, if I could, I would. I'm not scared of them. Oh, definitely. Definitely you're not scared of them, Matt Stock. And you're here taking control of this matchup. Look at look at Takamuri just stopping. Like, look at those stops. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I've seen Takamuri end title defenses in two minutes, and he just he stays aggressive the entire time. And Calvin Carter's got to a big chop block to the knee. And like I said, Calvin Carter's got to be prepared to go the distance tonight. I, I like. I'm, I'm actually starting to like this Takamuri guy. I mean, he. I, I think he has great potential to be a future tag team partner of mine and be my personal bodyguard. <laughs> As Kelvin Carter there, a big right hand. Carter going for the first cover of the night here. One, two, and a two count there as, as Takamuri able to get his shoulder up at the last moment. And this matchup is still relatively young. Like, there's, you know, it isn't that far in. It's not as old as Die Hard. That is that is very true, and we we do, I do know personally that you are probably Die Hard's biggest fan. You're probably his I, one fan in the world. Why do you keep saying that's really rude? And, um, first of all, you bring up the fact I'm not a world champion, and I am. And then you bring up Die Hard, me being a fan of this. First of all, that is unprofessional in the workplace. Let's 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 call the match where it's supposed to be. Definitely, let's, let's call the match. Yeah. Takamuri Taka throws him in the corner, sends him to the corner, and catches him here with look at this double underhook, lifting him and slamming him. But getting back to your point real quick about how you said it's unprofessional. I'm professional. Um, we do receive letters at TPP2K headquarters that are directed to Die Hard from somebody right. named JL. And I didn't. That's I, not. I'd assume that it probably is you, but they're love letters confessing their love for the Die Hard what? persona. That, that's can't be. It, okay, well, it definitely isn't. Be. It isn't you then. It's got to be Bronson. That's what it's got to be. It, it's funny. How do you how do you know Big Bronson? Because you know Big Bronson wrestles for PWA. You must be a world known athlete then. JDL. I am. I am. Uh, I wrestled. Uh, I wrestled for the world title. I picked him up. Oh, okay. So, is, I summon, are you also going to swear guard? Are you also going to tell me that uh, you wrestled an alligator once and you won? As uh, as talking or con or excuse me, Calvin Carter here in the cover and a two count for Calvin Carter. Uh, I excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, JDL here has got me all flustered right now. Let me tell you something. I wrestled him, I picked him up, I slammed him, and I pinned him in Madison Square Garden from 17,000 people. And look at Takumi, he calls that the, the roll of honor. Into the cover here, one, two, and a two count for Takumi. Did you just make that up? Well, no, no, he calls that the roll of honor. That, that clothesline, that rolling clothesline, he calls it the roll of honor. Well, we'll see after, we'll see after the show, because I'm going to go ask him. Uh, if you can understand Japanese, then yeah, sure. I, mean, I speak fluid languages all the time. Japanese. Oh, and, and look at Carter jumped out of the... Oh, he, was, he was going for that roll of honor again, but Carter moved out of the way there. He, he literally slid across the mat to get out of the way. See, this, this is why I like Carter. Because Carter is quite the athlete. He can jump, he can go the distance. He's, he's like a young Hercules. A young, much smaller Hercules, correct? Because, I mean, Hercules was a relatively large person. Carter, That's what I said. Carter into the cover there on the rope break, saving Takamuri. Don't don't correct me. I know what I'm talking about. I, I'm sure you do. Look at this figure four. What is this, like the invert? Is that an inverted figure four? What, what do we call this movie? That would definitely be a modified uh, seated figure four is what I would call it. I would call that uh, a modified. I, 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 you, you, you invented that move? No, I knew about it. I knew what it was. I just want to make sure you know oh, no. Okay, I mean, I've only been a, a professional broadcast announcer for, you know, probably 14 or 15 years. And not like I would know what wrestling movies are or anything. It's Takamuri sending Carter into the ropes. And a beautiful standing drop kick from Takamuri. And it, it doesn't even look like Takamuri's tired. No, it doesn't. And like I said, he's got amazing pacing for, you know, for every title defense that he does. He's got that special gift out, whatever it is, he's got. 
You know, I feel like you're really downplaying Carter right now. Well, I'm not I trying like you're to. you're putting him down. I, I, I am not putting Carter down. I'm just saying I think Carter underestimated what Takamori was capable of. And Takamori is one of those guys that would love to show you exactly what he's capable of. I, I feel that Carter could be the next... Let me, let me think of a title here that he can have. Well, I mean, he's world title. You, you think that Carter could be a future FFW champion? I mean, he could be a future champion. There, there's there's a chance that maybe someday that could happen, but, I mean, the task at hand for Carter is wrestling for the Adrenaline Championship, and there's no shame in competing for the Adrenaline Championship. But the thing is, he's got to be able to put away the champion, and Carter does not seem to be able to put Takamura away. Well. It, it, he does not, and you know what? I and mean, it doesn't help Carter that he has a he has a knee brace on, and he has long, flowing, oh, wait a second, hair. Wait a second! Look at this, the, holding See? him high with a power bomb, and boom, landing him on the back of his head and his neck. That's got to be at one, two, and oh Jesus! Somehow Carter barely got himself out of that situation. You know what? Die Hard lets moves like this be pulled off. Well, I mean, technically, you know, Die Hard is no longer the, the acting general manager of FFW. One. Steve Baker is. Okay, well, Steve... St Steve Baker is... No, 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 Baker. Then, Baker, like, ba ba like cookies. Baker cookie. Oh, okay, that's what I said. Uh, wow, what a power bump. See, that, that, that's one, two... Oh. See that? He almost had him. He almost, Carter almost had him, but the resiliency of Takamiri able to get his shoulder up at the last moment there. And that's why Takamiri is currently the champion. Takamiri, big back chop there, and that'll, that'll definitely leave a red mark across the chest. In my professional opinion, I think, you know, Taka and, and Carter have a big future this week. Oh, what a move. Wow. Huge, huge uh, reversal there from Calvin Carter in the 11th hour is where that came. That came about in the 11th hour. And in case you, in case you don't know what the 11th hour is, JDL, that means uh, very last moment. I knew that. That's Carter in the cover here. A two count of Takamuri again. Takamuri again showing his resiliency, getting his shoulder off the mat. You know, I did commentary with... Uh, some legends in this business and uh, I'm not gonna brag but I did for a couple of years you know okay I, I can't name names I would love to see that resume someday as a uh, as Takamura here squishing the head what is that what, what is he making a sandwich did you teach him that move he was making a knuckle sandwich oh that's <laughs> you're so funny with your horrible jokes that's Technically, what it would be called a knuckle sandwich. And Carter there, big counter with that jawbreaker. And now look, look at Carter going. And Carter uses that that uh, that leg submission maneuver frequently. So he might be looking to try to take out the legs of Takamura, take out the speed of the of the champion. That never works. Let me tell you, when I when I wrestled Bronson for the world title at Madison Square Garden in front of 50,000 people, I tried to take out his legs. Didn't work. You know what I did? No, I did. Knocked him out. Yeah, okay. In the head. Well, as you see, Carter here, that figure four using the ring post as additional leverage, and Takamiri had nowhere to go until Carter released the hook. As, uh, as Carter giving his feelings to everyone in attendance here tonight, letting them know exactly how he feels. And, ooh, that front shot block right to the, the front of the kneecap, and, and, and with you being an active wrestler, you know very well that injuries can happen Anytime. Yeah. Anywhere. Anytime, yeah. anywhere. And uh, a move like that does not do your, your legs any favors. I'll tell you about a serious injury I had. What, you want to know? Sure. Well, one time I was in a match, right? And then, you know, I got flipped and I landed on my fingers. Broken. Ooh, that's, that's not good. Yeah, finger injury. But you, you still wrestled the match, correct? I mean... No. That's stupid. You, you go, oh, do that. and Carter there <laughs> sending Takamuri face first into the turnbuckle post. But uh, I was just, I was, I was going to point out, um, I saw Die Hard wrestle with a torn ACL. Really? He continued the match. I feel like you're trying to outdo me. <laughs> I'm not trying. I'm just saying. I mean, a finger injury is, that's like getting a paper cut. I mean, I've seen people dislocate their shoulders in matches and still compete. And you stop the match for a bent finger?
two bent fingers. Don't, don't, don't be selfish. Don't be like that. Okay. Don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. As, as Takamuri here taking, uh, taking advantage of the situation, but Carter able to keep momentum on the side. They're right out here in front of us right now. And, uh, and wait a second, what is Carter doing? Ooh, and a, a no. modified head stomp there, stomping on the head of Takamuri as he was leaning up against our, our broadcast booth. Let me tell you something, Carter is unprofessional. I'm sitting here trying to do commentary. Next thing you know, he gets attacked, and all of a sudden his hair is breezing in my face, and it's getting all in my coffee and my, and my stuff. That is unprofessional. I don't know about unprofessional. I mean, for Calvin Carter, he, he's doing what he's got to do as Carter here. I mean, this matchup has spent a good couple of minutes here on the outside. This is not a no disqualification match. This is not false count anywhere. This is a normal one on one match. I better stay away from my cowboy hat. As Carter, oh, another big chop block to the front of the kneecap. And again, you know, a, a, a maneuver like that, it can, it can end a match very quickly. It could. It could. I know this guy that uh, tore his ACL. He still wrestled the match. Did I not just tell you about Diehard tore his ACL? I, I vividly remember telling you about that as uh, Carter here might be trying to say something. He might be looking to put talk Takamiri away. As Takamiri trying to fire back here. A series of, of right hands. It, well, first of all, his initials. His name is um, Devin Husky. Okay. All right. As Takamuri here. New Japan Pro Wrestler. So. Oh, yeah. Takamuri oh. might be setting up for that Roll of Honor again. Takamuri, he's pumping himself up. He rolls in. Oh, and that Roll of Honor clothesline. That's got to be it. I mean, this. What a move. Into the cover here with the leg hook. One, two, and a two count. And Takamuri does not look too happy right now, ladies and gentlemen. You don't know anything about David Husky. He's a legend in the business. You know, he's he's older than you, like two years old. No, oh, because I mean, you know, Die Hard's about ten years older than I am. Okay, you go back to give him time. You're trying to outdo me, Billy. No, I'm, I'm just. I don't like it. It's a negative app. It's a negative atmosphere when you do that. I'm, I'm just saying, Die Hard. You know, he has a very long wrestling career, you know, spanning 18 yeah. long years. Many ups and many downs, many injuries throughout his career. As uh, oh, and Takamuri caught the uh, caught the leg there. And now again that double hand hook for Takamuri. Takamuri's been game tonight. I mean, he's taken some damage, but he has been game in this match. He he has, and you know he's on the top of his game, and he and he has a long future in this business. And, I, and I'm not going to take that away from him. <coughs> What is, uh, I like his style. He, I, I would love to get in the ring and oh. have him lose to me. Did you see that Takamuri went to go to the well one too many times, allowing Calvin Carter to get back uh, in an advantageous position? And that, that's a big word for you. <laughs> As Calvin Carter wrenching this leg grapevine here on Takamuri, is Takamuri going to be able to get out, or is he going to say oh. Takamuri, he tapped out, ladies and gentlemen. We have a new FFW Adrenaline Champion named Calvin Carter III. Congratulations to Calvin Carter, but Takamiri can't really hold his head low after losing. I mean, he put up one heck of a fight to him. I blame you for him losing. You hyped him up and then you got let down. You, you made him lose. It's your fault. I, take the blame. I'm not, I can't take the blame for that. I mean, Calvin Carter came out, he had a game plan. He took out the legs of Takamiri and it worked. As you, after you said it wasn't going well, it worked. Don't throw that back in my face. Look at, look, but look at the smug look on Calvin Carter's face with the championship in hand, saying that he's the new Adrenaline champion. The, the career of Calvin Carter just getting ready to take off. He's lucky I don't go in there. I'm still in there from the shoulder. Okay, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, backstage we have again Elizabeth Sims standing by with the acting general manager Steve Baker and apparently Elizabeth is going to try to get some words from Steve regarding the breakdown rumble tonight I'm interested to see what he's got to say it's kind of been hell on earth for the past 29 days so we're, we're going to cut backstage ladies Steve and gentlemen. Baker later tonight is the breakdown rumble match are you going to get involved in any way Are you implying that I'm not a great general manager? 
Are you implying that tonight I may do something during the Rumble? I want to let you and everyone else know that tonight I'm not going to intervene at all with the Breakdown Rumble match. Whoever wins gets a shot at FFWX against Jerry Graham for the FFW Championship. And I don't plan to change that at all. As a matter of fact, I hope, I hope that somebody like Darren Trinidad or Die Hard or any of them superstars in the back win for the simple fact that no matter who wins, Jerry Graham will retain his FFW championship in February at FFWX. And, and Steve Baker there saying he's not going to get involved in the breakdown rumble in, in any way, shape, or form. I, I don't know if I believe him. He's a tall guy. He, I can tell you that He much. is a, a very tall individual. But like I said, I don't know if I believe Steve Baker. I mean, he's, he said that at the beginning of this month that he wasn't going to get involved in Darren Trinidad's match. And then he made it so Darren Trinidad has to enter number one tonight in the, in the breakdown rumble. But ladies and gentlemen, right now, Ladies and gentlemen, the, the following match. contest is for one fall. It is for the FFW Internet Championship. I think, I think we can rely on Steve Baker to live up to his word. He's a good boss. He does a lot for this company. Unlike you, Billy. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna really bring it. Well, you know, you know, I mean, again, Steve Baker set up this matchup. He handpicked Trey Haynes to compete against Lance Owens. I like Trey Haynes. He 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 looks like a dominant group. He he looks he reminds me of Conan the Barbarian. You know, he's here to conquer. And I think that's what he's gonna do in this match tonight. Well see that's what these these Haynes brothers do when they when they roll in the pack together and, and for, for Lance Owens, who has had such a story career in FFW and TPP throughout the years. He's, Lance Owens has had such a story career. For, if it ends tonight against Trey Haynes, it will be an insult and defamation of the Lance Owens character. I, I'm confident on this big guy. I, I think he'll make a great bodyguard for me to protect me from people like you that bring negativity to the workplace. I have been here, JDL, since 7.30 this morning. I, I helped set up the ring. I helped get all the lighting ready to go. But this man, yeah. Lance Owens, was here no. at 729 this morning sign, uh, signing uh, autographs. Boring. As you hear, the fans here tonight giving support to Lance Owens. And that's how it should be. Lance Owens loves the fans. No one cares about him. Well, apparently, just, they feel bad for him. the fans here love him as he is the reigning internet champion. And, and while I've got a few moments here, ladies and gentlemen, FFW is going through a facelift. Uh, so the next time you see us, uh, you will be seeing FFW on Mondays. And uh, all the championships apparently are getting redesigned, ladies and gentlemen, so they will all appear differently the next time you see them. But for this man, Lance Owens, is, if he retains his belt tonight, he needs to put that belt on a mantle in his home. Yeah. And show that he can take out Trey Haynes, because Trey Haynes has been taking orders, his marching orders from Steve Baker. That's just the way it is. Steve Baker gives him marching orders, and those Haynes brothers have been acting out those orders week in and week out, night in and night out, all month Introducing month, the challenger, weighing in at 263 pounds from Jacksonville, Florida, Trey Haynes! Oh, and the champion, weighing in at 241 pounds from Fairbury, Nebraska, Lance Owens! And as you see Lance Owens handing the referee his internet championship, this is one fall, ladies and gentlemen. This is our final match of the night before the breakdown rumble. This is, for Lance Owens, this is his big opportunity to showcase his skills, and then he'll be in the rumble a little bit later tonight. Same with Trey Haynes. And you're, you're predicting Trey Haynes to win this time. Yeah, Haynes. Pip squeak over there doesn't have a chance. As, uh, as we're getting ready to get this underway, standing tie up here. And, and look, at, look at the pip squeak, as you called him, backing Trey Haynes into the ropes. That's not, that's not what I said. I said, 
Ooh, a, nice. I didn't say that. A big slap there from Trey Haynes. A sign of disrespect towards Lance Owens and Trey Haynes with a big back chop. But again, Lance Owens right into the tie up. Lance Owens is trying to keep this match squeaky clean. I never said he was a pip squeak. I don't know where you got that from. Never said it. Okay. Definitely, you never said it. Never once said it as uh, Trey Haynes now starting to fire on all cylinders. Uh, you know, try, he, definitely Trey Haynes wants to try, ooh, and a big lunging headbutt, wants to make quick work of Lance Owens. You know, Trey Haynes is the future of this company. You, you have to respect that. Look at him. He's big. Like I said, he is like Conan the Barbarian. He will conquer. He will destroy what he needs to do. And look at him. Right now, he is doing what he needs to do. He is wailing on this pip screen that you said I called him. I didn't call him. And, oh, oh, look at him, he's firing. Oh, look at the pip squeak. Oh, yeah, look now the fans get behind him like he's something. No, no, there's been a lot of guys like him. I've seen them, they end up injured and they're gone for a year. I've seen it happen, I've been in the business. Well, look at, look at Lance Owens here, the fans here giving their support. No. As I think, I think you're downplaying him. Definitely not downplaying anybody. I, I believe that Trey Haynes has the skill set to do great things in this business, but I think tonight that Lance Owens will show once and for all that Trey Haynes can be defeated one on one. Agree to agree with me. I will agree to disagree with you. I mean, sure, if Trey Haynes had help from his two brothers, it'd probably be a different story. But in this situation, Trey Haynes doesn't have that support. His brothers are not allowed at ringside right now. And that works to the benefit of Lance Owens. And look at Lance Owens here. Abdominal stretch with a stretch muffler. Look at this. Just wrenching away on, on, wow. on Trey Haynes. That. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come out with this. I did call him pit squeak. I did. I, I, I know you did. And, and the whole world knows that you did. See, there you go. Being negative. See? You want me to admit something. I don't want to admit. As Trey Haynes here into the cover one. And only a one count on the current internet champion. And then you rub it in my face. This is what you do. This is why we're having a hard time working together right now. At least I'm having a hard time working with you. Well, I'm, I'm having a great time working with you tonight, JD. I, I, I think you bring a, a certain chemistry to, you bring out the best in me. As uh, Owens, you're into the cover again. But only a one count for Lance Owens on Trey Haynes. What a move there. And now look at Trey Haynes. Using his strength to his advantage, you know, he definitely has much more body mass than Lance Owens. Into the cover here. One, and barely a one count on, uh, on Lance Owens. I, I need to tell you that, you know, like I said, this, this guy, he is Conan. He, he is a dominator. You know, he, he's going he's gonna to destroy Pip Squeak. He, he's, he's not, he doesn't have a chance, man. As Trey Haynes again back into the cover here. A two count now. And uh, I think that knee might have... Uh, might have knocked a, a little bit of a rattle into Lance Owens there, but Owens still fighting, still showing that he can fight. I, I know people like Owens, and you see, you're probably friends with him backstage. You probably talk to him, you're willy nilly. You, he gets you coffee and a donut, and then you go back and sit down and do commentary for your low budget, cheap quality TV. But, you know, he's not going to make it. In this world, you know, he needs to change his attitude. And so, Owens, very support gets plenty of support from the fans. A series of elbow drops here on Trey Haynes, but Lance Owens, you know, from the day he first walked in the door at the beginning of 2013 with CPP, I knew that he would go very far in this business. And it's taken him some time to get where he's at, but he's got nowhere to go but up into the cover here. Two, a two for Lance Owens on Trey Haynes. What a two count. Well, like I said, he he's got he there's no he can't go any lower than he was before, you know. And now he's just on that uphill climb. He's just going up. Let me tell let me get, let me tell you something. When you're down on the ground and you're getting pinned, it feels like a boxing match. No one wants to go three three minutes in boxing. No one wants to do that. It feels like you've been down forever. And then when you finally get out of it, you kick out. You feel great. As, and, I, and I love that. I love that about the business. And as you saw, I mean, Trey Haynes was really wrenching um, that modified triangle choke there. As Trey Haynes now, a, what a DDT! A big DDT. That's a DDT. That's a winning DDT. Watch him. He's win right here. Watch this. With the leg one, hook. one, two. And you know one. what? And look, I thought you said he was going to win. As you see, he was going to win. And then you brought your negativity. That's what you did. Brought your negativity. Your 
nonsensical commentary attitude. I see as uh, help. Lance Owens now into the cover. One and a one count on Trey Haynes. And that suplex not enough to keep the big man down. Of course not. Big man's going to destroy Pip Squeak. David, David and Goliath. Who won that? Go ahead. Um, David. Goliath didn't win. David spun a rock and threw that his head. And Owens here with a quick roll up. One. Two. Okay, you, you believe the fictional story you want here. I know the real story. Were you alive when David and Goliath happened? No, but I know the real story. Oh, okay. As you believe everything you hear in a book? As I went to get into the cover, too, as Trey Haynes able to get his shoulder up at the last moment there. And regardless, you can't take anything away from Lance Owens. I mean, he's... His back is against the wall here against Trey Haynes. I will admit that. I mean, Trey Haynes, so strong compared to Lance Owens. But Lance Owens showing no signs of fear in this in this scenario. I mean, he's giving it everything he can. You know, I don't have the greatest of luxuries back in PWA. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm next to a, a room that plays disco music and party music. I don't understand what that's about. Someone needs to look into this because I'm sick of it. I, I, it's driving me crazy. I, uh, I definitely can understand your frustration as, yeah. uh, as Trey Haynes here starting to pick apart Lance Owens as this matchup continues. And, and again, ladies and gentlemen, in case you missed what we were talking about earlier, uh, tomorrow night, uh, PWA Adrenaline will be live. So you'll be able to catch me again and, and my broadcast partner, Devin Wall. As uh, we call that, as JDL here is not scheduled to compete in that company. I, I should be. You know, I don't know why I'm not. I'm the world champion over there. I don't know if anyone knows this. You know, I know I said I didn't want you to you know, tell where I came from or, you know, PWA or, you know. But I'm going to bring it up anyway and just let you know that I am a world champion. Okay? I'm a two-time world champion over there. Well, as you saw there, Trey Haynes hit the end DDT. And in college to the cover two, and look at look at that the resiliency of Lance Owens falling over onto his other shoulder, getting onto his belly off of his back. It's not it's not resiliency. He should just give up. That's not resiliency. That's that's just him. He doesn't want to be a sore loser. <laughs> Let the big man crumple him and beat him up. <laughs> excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Your that excuse. is please leave. That is called resiliency. Look at this. Lance Owens firing back. Big clothesline there. And look at this half Nelson face buster. Wow. And that used to be my finisher at one point. I called it the uh, the wings. Okay. Dude, how many matches did you win with the low wings? None. That's why I got rid of it. Let me see. You should really listen. I said used to. You don't listen very well. Oh, and Lance Owens sending Trey Haynes to the outside. Trey Haynes thought he was going to catch that big punch, but he didn't. Look at Lance Owens. He's feeling it tonight here. He's not. He's not feeling it. That walk that he just did is a sign of him shaking in his little cowboy boots. Well, as you but don't you touch my hat. Okay. And Trey Haynes yeah. getting back in the ring. Running in here. Big pull. Oh, no. Lance Owens caught him there with that, that arm drag. And look at Lance Owens' game tonight. He was ready for Trey Haynes. He is ready for Trey Haynes. I feel like you're taking sides. I feel like you're not seeing it my way. What you should, but you're not really seeing it my way. I am I am an, an unbiased commentator. I mean, of course, there are wrestlers that I do happen to like more than other wrestlers. As Why? Because they talk to you? Because you're a loser? No, I, I'm very popular backstage. I'm a cover here by, of course, right. by Lance Owens. One, two. And look at that. It's another two count for Lance Owens. All he has to do is keep Trey Haynes down for one more count. And that's it. And Trey Haynes runs in that like a boulder rock, like a rolling rock there with that big shoulder tackle. One, two. And almost a three count for Trey Haynes, but Owens able to get his shoulders off the mat again. Like I said, I'm very big on this Trey Haynes guy. He's going to be perfect to be my bodyguard. I'm hopefully I'm gonna talk to him backstage and we can get something worked out. And then he could be my broadcast partner because you are just, you know, taking sides. Well clearly you're taking sides. You only want Trey Haynes to win. You're not being unbiased here. You don't want Lance Owens to win. I don't think you've been listening to me the whole night. I said that. I said that Pip Squeak has a chance of winning. You ever seen David and Goliath? Yes. David David won. So you should really listen to what I say 
and stop listening to yourself so much. You know, JDL, I think that we're going to have a great relationship here at the broadcast booth. It's already blooming. It's, it's already, already blooming. My friend. And wait a second, look at this. Oh, yes. The, oh. the NDDT again. That's two times now that Lance Owens has been dropped on his skull. And Trey Haynes might be, uh, he might be looking to put Owens away for good here. He calls out the pip squeak drop. Here we go. The pip squeak. One. Two. And almost a three count, but Owens again able to get his shoulders off the mark. Owens is not going to die tonight. He is not going to die to Trey Haynes. Catches the foot there. Big clothesline from Lance Owens. Hooking the far leg again. One. Two. And another two count. This has had many, many two counts in this matchup. We should not use the word die because we would have a very big problem on our hands. We don't wish death upon our wrestlers. So no, I, I meant it figuratively, not, not literally. Yeah, you. Whatever you say, negative Nancy. As the uh, as the referee here be exercising his ten count, as you see Lance Owens yeah. saying that he will strike. You know, I you know, and I ladies and gentlemen, while I've got a moment here. Also, uh, it was announced a few moments ago via our headsets. Uh, to, uh, tomorrow night, or not tomorrow night, but Monday night on FFW Genesis. Uh, we're welcoming in the hardcore division back into FFW. And apparently the first matchup that they're booking is going to be uh, quite impressive. It's going to have a debut in it. So I'll be looking forward to that on, uh, on Monday as, oh, Trey Haynes' big left hand there, big left hook. And, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, Say this. I don't want to say that your your hip squeak's going to lose, but he's going to lose, and it's going to be the end. And then you're going to look really ridiculous when he does. Well, well look at Lance Owens. Here. I mean, who's down on the mat right now? Trey Haynes, not Lance Owens. And as I say that, Trey Haynes with a big counter over back. Down. Exactly. Boom. Proved you wrong. <laughs> as uh, Trey Haynes here just stalking, going off the ropes here. You know, I feel like you think you know. Oh, about the press. oh what a kick! Big lunging sidekick there from, from Lance Owens, hooking the far leg. This has got to be it. One, two, almost a three oh. count again. You know, I feel like you know everything about fresh. Have you ever even been in a match? Have you ever locked up with somebody before? Yes, I have. Really? You've taken a bump? I have taken a bump, yes. Really? What backyard wrestling show were you a part of? I was actually, it was actually TPP No Mercy in 2011. I am one and old for your information as Trey Haynes here looking to put away Lance Owens. We, we saw this at the end of Strike Zone on Thursday. What the hell? He did this to, to Darren Trinidad, and Trinidad apparently is bandaged, bandaged up tonight uh, going into the breakdown rumble. Kiss of death right there. And hooking the far leg. This has got to be it. We have, we're going to have a new internet yes. champion. One, two, and oh my God, Lance Owens able to get his shoulder off the mat. Ref, do your job. His shoulder did not get up. He, His shoulder was not up. You could clearly see that on the on the angle that we had. He got up and wait a second. Lance Owens, that, that big dropping DDT, that, that straight jacket DDT. Stupid. Hooking the far leg here. One, two, and three. And that is all she wrote. Lance Owens off of a, a makeshift DDT defeated Trey Haynes. Retained, retained his FFW Internet Championship. Congratulations to Lance Owens, ladies and gentlemen. He proved tonight that you can beat Trey Haynes when it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. When it's not three-on-one, Trey Haynes is not so tough, ladies and gentlemen. And that can be said about all the Haynes brothers. You sound ridiculous. You are just this, mad this because you know that I'm right, JDL. You look at I, look at Lance Owens uh, able to hold this title high, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. When we come back, it will be time for the FFW Breakdown Rumble, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations again goes out to Lance Owens. Hard fought victory. You know. Tough break. I love, I feel great saying this. Tough break for Trey Haynes. He got what he had coming, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back in just a few moments with the conclusion of the FFW Breakdown. The Breakdown Rumble is up next, ladies and gentlemen. So sit tight, and we'll be right back.
Have you ever been late for a show? Didn't know if you were gonna make it on time. Never miss a beat with FFW Genesis or FFW Strike Zone. Follow on Twitter, on YouTube, on Twitch. Follow anywhere and everywhere. Just make sure that you always make it to the FFW Arena. Because doing this is a revolution, a change that is welcome forever. So join the revolution. And we're back here, folks, and it is time for the Breakdown Rumble. Uh, before the break there, you heard me going off at JDL about Lance Owens retaining his championship. And, uh, you know, J JDL has been sitting here sulking for the past minute. She's great. She's great. He, had, he had something. He had something. He did something. I saw a weapon during the match. There was there was no up. weapon use during the match, ladies Last and months. gentlemen. No no weapon use at all. But as you see, ladies and gentlemen, it is now confirmed. Darren Trinidad is definitely taped up heading into this breakdown rumble. And, and honestly, I can understand why. I mean, this has been a hard, hard two months for Darren Trinidad. He has been beat down, kicked around for the past two months. The past 60 days has been nothing but an onslaught of... Just three-on-one matches, two-on-one matches, five-on-ones, four-on-ones. You know, Darren Trinidad has not had a normal one-on-one -on -one matchup or that ended in a one-on-one -on -one matchup in over two months. And what do you call that? What do you call that then, JDL? I mean, he's constantly getting jumped. What do you call that? He should quit the business and go somewhere else, you know, because he has a big mouth and obviously he deserves it. He's a bully. He's a small bully that deserves to get jumped. You know, it's funny you say that because, I mean, like, I mean he's not that big a wrestler and Darren Trinidad more or less keeps to himself. I mean, he's one of the nicest people I've ever met. He's very nice. I don't think he deserved all the punishment. the punishment he gets and now he's being forced to enter number one in the Breakdown Rumble. He has to go through 29 other people, including this young man, making his debut tonight in the Breakdown Rumble, Corey Wrights. You know, he's, he's not a big wrestler at all, but Corey Wrights, one of the wrestlers in our upcoming hardcore division, which again will be coming out uh, on Monday. So, I mean, my opinion, I, I'm usually all for the underdog. You know, I, I'm a big supporter of Darren Trinidad. However, I don't think... In all honesty, I don't think that Trinidad can last for 30 or 29 other men. It's just, that's that's a huge feat to go through. It's huge to get through even six men. You know, so how, if he can barely get through six, how is he going to get through 29 others? And Kanji getting ready to make his way, his appearance in the Rumble here at entrant number three. You know, you seem like you're a numbers guy. No one cares about the numbers. Everyone cares about who's going to win it. And let me tell you, if it was me, I would have already won this. This would have already been done. You know, these wrestlers here, they don't get to, they don't get stuff done fast enough. We need to get it done. They, they need to get it done faster. I'm the fastest, they're the slowest. You're the fastest and they're the slowest. Man. Yes. All right, it took me a minute to get my words together, but yes. Well, this is this would be my pick this guy. to go a long ways in the rumble with Bryson, number four. Clearly the biggest man in this bracket. You know, I'm bigger than 260, 270 pounds. He's brute muscle compared to everybody else in this match. I could beat him in an arm wrestling match. I don't know if you want to get in an arm wrestling match with uh, Bryson, but if he hits you with that clothesline from hell, it would be game, set, and match. Okay. Now you're just rhyming. Yeah, I'm just saying, that's what it would be. I mean, have you... If you saw his arm coming at you, you definitely would not be want to be with him with an eye shot. And Takamuri here, we just saw him a, a little bit ago, recently lost yeah. his championship to Calvin Carter. Your fault. You hyped him up and then he lost. 
And as you see, Calvin Carter with a look of disdain, or uh, Takamir with a look of disdain on his face. I'm sorry about that. I'm getting a little flustered here as JDL trying to downplay the importance of Darren Trinidad, Bryson, Kanji, and Takamir in this matchup. I have to downplay them. Because if I downplay them, they win. You downplay them, they lose. We need a winner here. There we go. Well, who's, who's this? This is this. The sixth man making a. Uh, he actually, ironically enough, ladies and gentlemen, this young man was released from his contract this morning. I, I was uh, given an email saying that James Anderson has been released from FFW, but uh, due to the terms of his contract, he still has to compete in the Breakdown Rumble. And they said because he had his gear here, there was no reason he couldn't compete tonight. Oh, he looks, he looks, uh, he looks promising. This is James Anderson, one of the most egotistical young men I've ever seen, and he just cannot get himself in the niche that he needs to be. That's not very nice. It's, it's the truth. This kid has all the potential and all the skills that any young adrenaline wrestler should want, but he just doesn't have the right mindset. And it's not very nice to call me egotistical. Uh, it's, it's the truth about James Anderson. That's just the way it is. So your predictions for this bracket, at least, who do you think is going to win this bracket? Darren Trinidad, Corey Reichs, Kanji, Bryson, Takimiri, or James Anderson? Who is going to continue on Ta it? Takimiri, the guy that you downplay. You think Takimiri is going to go the distance yeah. in, this, in, this, in this bracket? And here we go, right from the get-go, Anderson going right after Corey Reichs there, but Trinidad grabbing the hair of James Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no rules in this matchup. The only rule is both your feet have to hit the floor on the outside if you go over the top. That is the only rule in this matchup. There's, there's people can work together. They can work against each other. This is an intense matchup. From bell, you have one bell, the opening bell, and then you have the final bell that signifies the winner. That is it. Yeah. See, my strategy going into this without no jokes, all joking aside, going this, I would take the biggest man out. He is the problem. He is the threat that you have to worry about when you're alone and you're standing the other side of that ring for me. But we got to throw the big man but out. But when you want to work with the big man, maybe to have him help you out in the match, as uh, Trinidad, you're trying to eliminate Anderson, but I mean, I I'm honestly asking, like, wouldn't you want to work with the big man because he can help you eliminate people? Oh, yeah, he can help you eliminate, but then what's going to happen when you're with him one-on-one? -on -one? Well, at that point, I mean, if you're the smaller man, you'd have much more stamina than him. This is true. So you make, a good, you make a good point, but I'm not agreeing with you. But you make a good point. I'm not agreeing. Okay. All right. That, that's on. That's on record. Okay. Yeah, that's on record, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. That uh, that JDL did not agree with me, but he did agree with me that it would make sense to work with the big man. Don't don't tell. Don't lie to the fans like that. Why are you lying? As Trinidad, you're trying to eliminate Anderson, and Anderson's barely hanging on here, and and Trinidad gets the first elimination here. Thanks for coming, James Anderson. That's not very nice. Good. You called him egotistical, and now you're saying thanks for, thanks for coming. Good luck in your like, future endeavors here as Darren Trinidad, the first elimination in the breakdown rumble. He's got 28 more people to go through. You know, you come off kind of two-faced when you say stuff like that. I just to know. Uh, it doesn't make me two-faced. And Trinidad here pulling no punches. He, Trinidad has no alliances to anybody in this match, I don't think. And ooh, Bryson with that big back right there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard. Oh, Bryson. It's hard to call all the action in this match right? because of how many people are around. I mean, there's yeah. six people in each segment. We'll do our best to call the action as it happens. But, ooh, then that big throat thrust there from Bryson. Uh, Trinidad, though, going right after Bryson, like you said, going after the big guy. And wait a second. Big hang. I, I, I think this is a conspiracy. That's what I think this is. I think they're working. I think, I think, I think they're, I think, I think this is a conspiracy, you know? Can't tell who it's against right now. Though. Can't tell who it's against as Kanji here. Looking to eliminate Takamuri. Look at this. Oh, you're always going against Takamuri again. Well, no, it's, again. I'm just saying. Like, I, Kanji's trying to eliminate. Oh, and a big knee there from Trinidad. And, oh, Takamuri oh, got eliminated. Currently, we are, Get down, we are at one elimination for Trinidad, one elimination for Kanji. You're seeing it on your screen now. Uh, we've got a little elimination count tracker this year to keep track of how many eliminations there have been. There's been one man in this business uh, that has entered at number eight and made it to number 24. 
No, that was that was extreme. This would be Die Hard's first rumble. The first rumble that Die Hard has ever been involved in. He, he's got entrant number 26, so Die Hard has the luxury of getting time to wait before he has to actually enter this rumble. So good. Entrance 26. He is entrant number 26. He he earned that entrant. Oh, favoritism, that's what it is. I don't know if, I don't know if it's favoritism. I mean him and Steve yeah. Baker tend to share a lot of words, uh, negative words towards one another. So I don't know if that would be favoritism as Trinidad here. Big snap suplex to Kanji. We're down to uh, Kanji, Darren Trinidad, Bryson, and Corey Reichs. We have four people left in this bracket. Only one of these men will last as Bryson hit the Bryson bottom on Corey Reichs. And like I said, Bryson is my pick for this bracket. I mean, he's, he's the biggest man in here. And wait a second, Corey. Oh, look at Corey Reichs using his smaller size to, uh, to his advantage there, pulling himself back into the ring. He almost got eliminated there. Corey Wright looks like he belongs in an office. He doesn't look like he belongs in a wrestling ring. Why is he wearing jeans? That's so unprofessional. Like I said, you're unprofessional, he's unprofessional. You downplay, you downplay the underdog all the time. Just like the David and Oh my! I said David oh, look at Corey Wright just eliminated Bryce, and he eliminated the biggest man in the matchup, ladies and gentlemen. The biggest man in the matchup. Look at this. That, that yeah. is uh, unheard of. And, and look at yeah. Wait a second, Kanji trying to eliminate rights here. But I will tell you this, you are dedicated to doing your job, and I, and I do respect and hate you for it. Wait a second, Kanji drop kicking. Oh, Rikes has been eliminated. So now Kanji has two eliminations. Trinidad has one, and Corey Rikes had one elimination before he got eliminated. So right now, Kanji has the most eliminations in this matchup. And wait a second, Trinidad, big clothesline to Kanji, sending Kanji over the top rope. It's tied two to two, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Darren Trinidad lasted through the first bracket. He moves into this next bracket. Five more superstars are going to come out. And he's got to be able to withstand another five. Do you think he can do it? Well, you see, he, he is a, uh, what's that word? He's soft. That's what he is. He has to wear something around his... To, you know, protect his injuries. I wouldn't need that if I was in this. Well, if, if you had received the damage he had received, you probably would be wearing it too. And yeah. as you're hearing over this, Riley Thompson, entrant number seven. This young man, oh. very storied career. Uh, second generation oh. wrestler. His father, Brandon Thompson, trained with Die Hard I years missed. ago. You know, uh, and Riley Thompson, he's had a, a mixed career thus far. He's a former. FFW million, million Dollar Champion. Uh, he's a former tag team champion years ago. And at, at the young age of 25, he's been professionally wrestling for five years. So at the beginning of his career there, he became a tag team champion. And now later on in his career, he's been a singles competitor champion, but since last year, he has not held a championship. You know, so for Riley Thompson, this is something that he wants and uh you're hearing over the uh over the pa system here you're hearing what sounds like iron man and, and this is dan furious ladies and gentlemen he he has made a couple of appearances in in, in fractal wrestling entertainment and uh dan furious entrant number eight uh conglomerately this is any wrestlers that are wrestling for fractal wrestling entertainment and any wrestlers that are wrestling for ffw able to compete in the breakdown rumble he looks like he never said a cuss word in his life. I don't, I don't know about never saying a cuss word in his life. He tends to be very potty mouth backstage, so... Oh, he's potty mouth? That's the word you use? Potty mouth? How is he? Uh, you don't disclose my age on that black back. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, wait a second. I know this theme song, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. This man, this man right here. I just talked about him a few moments ago. This is the only man in the history of TPP and FFW to ever enter at number 8 and go to number 24. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Extreme, apparently making at least a one-time appearance tonight at the Breakdown Rumble. Extreme, look at saying one more time, he thinks he can go through the, the longevity of the Rumble. Last time he eliminated 15 people. I don't like him. He eliminated half of the first Breakdown Rumble. Now he's coming in at number nine, I think he can do it. If there's one man that you would, you should place your bet on, Extreme would be that man. See, you downplayed everyone else in the match and you're hyped about this guy. 
That's what you do. You downplay. You are good at your job, but you are horrible at taking sides. That's what your problem is, and I said that before. I'm not taking sides here. I'm just pointing out the obvious JBL. Extreme has the resume to prove it. He has the but resume to prove it. He's not a marketing tool. Man. You have to understand that. His name is Extreme. That's not a. That's not somebody. Someone's gonna go to. You know what I mean? I definitely think it is as a. I agree to agree with me. No, I will agree to disagree with you as Extreme, a former multi-time former tag team champion. But this man, this young man right here, the number ten entrant, ladies and gentlemen, definitely had his work cut out from earlier in the night. Anthony Guerrero Jr. here. Entering at number 10 in the breakdown rumble. Entering number 10. Still a tag team champion. He, he and his partner Brickwell defeated. They defeated the Haynes brothers to kick off the night. Yeah, you downplayed the Haynes brothers too. You downplayed them completely. I did not downplay the Haynes brothers. I pointed, You're a down player. I pointed out statistics, JDL, statistics. This is why they don't let you commentate for football. I'd be a great football broadcaster. No, you would not. I would be amazing. I would downplay the other team all the time. Nope. I don't know. I'm not going to have this argument with you. <laughs> okay, that's perfectly fine because you know that I'm right. And uh, as you're hearing right now, this man, probably the largest man in this bracket, Atlas. 300 plus pounds. I mean, the only man that comes close to him in size is Extreme. And Atlas here entering number 11. So Atlas, I mean, prediction time here. It's either Extreme or Atlas. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Either Extreme or Atlas will continue on in this bracket. Nothing against Anthony Guerrero Jr., Dan Furious, or Riley Thompson. But we're talking about Atlas, the man that is insanely strong. And extreme, another man that is insanely strong. These are two insanely strong men. Well, well since you, you know, you're down with you down for people. I'm gonna go with the underdog in this match. The the he hasn't had a lot of experience in the business. I'm gonna go with Junior. You're gonna go with Anthony Guerrero Jr. Yes, I am. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I I'm. I'm split between Extreme and Atlas, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready to get to, and look at this, right? We didn't even have time for them to, to signify to begin. They just started going at it here. And, and Dan Fury is making a beeline towards, uh, towards Darren Trinidad and Junior, try, already trying to eliminate Riley Thompson. There's some heated history between these uh, those two, Riley Thompson and Junior. Uh, you know, back in 2014, they had an amazing uh, street fight for the FFW Million Dollar Championship, and I mean, they went all out. I mean, they, they were bloody by the end of that match. Oh, you actually have a lot of blood on your show? That's amazing. I figured that you're one of those people that would quiver and pass up. They saw blood. I, I personally do not mind blood, uh, but I do forewarn the fans uh, that they are squeamish. Maybe wanting to turn away his extreme, holding Trinidad above his head and slamming him down. As you see on your screen, the elimination counter showing Trinidad currently the only man in this bracket with an elimination at two eliminations. An extreme uh, going right for the back and the rib area of Darren Trinidad. Uh, those taped up ribs and, and the back area, he's just he's pinpointing that location. You know, that's all he's doing. He, he's going to pick it apart. And Dan Furious is slamming Atlas right onto his face. Uh, you know, grabbing the hair of Atlas, reaching very high to get him. So much going on in this match, it's very hard for me to call moves out, you know? That is very true. There's, there's a lot of action going on right now. Nobody has been eliminated yet, ladies and gentlemen. As look at Extreme here lifting. Ooh, Trinidad up again, going right for the body. You know, you know, you are a captain, obvious. They know people have been eliminated. They're watching the program. Why do you got to say it? Why do you got to do that to them? Yeah. You downplay. Now you're downplaying the people watching on TV. Oh, someone's about to get eliminated. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That was trying to eliminate Riley Thompson here. Yeah. Look at your boy Riley Thompson that you so hyped up. Oh. Okay. And Riley Thompson able to uh, squeeze the bottom rope. Where's oh, Extreme just eliminated uh, Dan Furious. Extreme now has one elimination. Well, see, that's what he gets for not saying a cuss word. Now he's eliminated. And Dan Furious has to go back to uh, the backstage area as Extreme here starting to work on Anthony Jr. and Riley Thompson getting the short end of the stick here. He's got Atlas and Darren Trinidad on him right now. Oh, they 
Santa tells some like heartbreaking emotional story about how he gets beaten down, he has to wear a bandage over his boob. Well, no, I'm just saying, I mean, if you if you were Darren Trinidad and you got beat down by three people on every never would have. every appearance you appeared at, I think you at the end of the month would also want to wear something on your body to help maybe try to protect it a little bit. Never would happen. I mean they medically cleared Trinidad to compete with and Atlas eliminated by Trinidad, like I was saying, they they medically cleared Trinidad to compete. But he does have Bruce Grips. And ooh, extreme though, right going right into the ribs, and I found that out this morning. Uh, and at the same time, I found out that Trinidad was going to be taped up coming into this matchup. Trinidad currently sitting at three eliminations. I had bruised fingers. I broke my fingers. Two of them. And, uh, you know, did I cry? No. Did I go to the hospital? Yeah. But, you know, I got right back in the ring a month later when they healed. You took and, a month uh, off from broken yeah. fingers? Yeah. Okay, because uh, I heal quickly. Darren Trinidad was just in the ring right. less than 48 hours ago, competing. See, it's always a competition with you. It's who's better? Die hard this, die hard that. Trinidad this. I'm tired of it. <laughs> As you see, though, I mean, Trinidad trying to—he's dishing out the pain here to Extreme. He's dishing it out. Look at this. Extreme might be getting eliminated right here. As uh, Trinidad trying to eliminate Extreme. Put, oh, but Extreme able to. Get himself out of that situation. And look at Extreme tossing Trinidad. Wait a second. I think you're just I think you're upset with me because I said I was a world champion Ooh. and you just never been there. You've never been in that spot. Oh, before. I've never tried to become a world champion. I think if I tried, I, I, I may maybe could, but I'm not interested in being a professional wrestler. I'm a professional I, broadcast host. Yeah. They're coming out with a broadcast title. Oh, wait a this. second. Oh, and thanks for coming, Anthony Jr. Extreme now two eliminations. I swear to God, sometimes I feel like this is scripted, and you just, you just, you know, hyped up extreme all, and then my guy loses because you hyped him up more. <laughs> well, no, you just, you picked the wrong guy to win, and look at extreme here. Clean in house here. What is... Oh, yeah, look at you. Extreme, extreme holding it down here against two people. You can't take that away from this man. He doesn't even have a first name or like a last name. It's just Extreme. Well, it's his wrestling name. Yeah. And wait a second, Extreme. He calls this move the derailer. Uh, My wrestling name is the Executioner, but I don't go around telling people that. Well, I mean, if you got if the Executioner got into a wrestling match with Extreme, I think Extreme would probably win. What? What are you trying to say? I'm saying that I think Extreme could break you in half. Break me in. I'll get up right now. Do you want me to get up? You want that down? You really want to go get in there with Extreme? Look at that big back body it. drop there from Extreme. I'll get in there right now. Ooh, you know what? Ow, 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 ow. Shoulder, 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 shoulder. Can't. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. But that's... he's lucky. Yeah, he's lucky. My shoulder didn't hurt. I didn't tweak it. I'll get in there and I'll take him out. As you see, Thompson asking for a little bit of leniency here for them to back off on the strikes as uh, we're waiting to find out who's going to get eliminated next. Trinidad still I'm ha has. I'm having, I'm having a little video issue now. Trinidad still has uh, three eliminations. Extreme only has two. Oh, and, and uh, Trinidad might have been caught right there with that big right hand from Extreme. Uh oh. And now Extreme here. Oh, and that shoulder tackle. And now Extreme and, and Trinidad are tied up three to three here, ladies and gentlemen. Three to three. As now Extreme picking apart Aaron Trinidad. Just carefully taking his time. All Extreme has to do is put Trinidad over the top rope. Now Extreme sending Trinidad into the ropes. And yes, Trinidad, Trinidad is bleeding, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. I had some... Uh monitor went out there ladies and gentlemen it's okay wait a second extreme now again looking for the derailer here on on darren trinidad and another derailer there and uh trinidad just rolled out of the ring underneath the bottom rope ladies and gentlemen trinidad is not eliminated it looks like medical staff has now rushed the ring here to attend to uh trinidad it looks like trinidad may be injured you ready? Uh, and what was that 
Well, that, that means that means that I, I'm assuming we're just going to continue on uh, until Tr Trinidad is cheating. That's what he's doing. I don't do, I don't think he's cheating. I think he's actually injured as Brick Wall here, making entrant number twelve. I, I, from what I'm, we're, this guy again. we're being notified right now on our headsets that yeah, we're just going to continue on through the breakdown rumble until Trinidad can return to the match. But uh, they're keeping the mat ringside. Uh, they, they're attending to him now as. Uh, Rick Wall taking his time here coming to the ring. What? You see, he's cheating. That's why, he, that's why, you know, oh, I'm hurt, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. Next thing you know, he's in the ring. What, you know? Well, I mean, cheating. He, he is technically very hurt. I mean, he, as you see, the, you can see the medical personnel sit, attending to him up in the corner of the uh, ringside area there holding his ribs, feeling them, trying to make sure that they may not be broken. I mean, Extreme's derailer is a very painful maneuver. As we're waiting, awaiting the arrival of this young man, he is the new Adrenaline Champion, Calvin Carter. You know, he won that earlier tonight against Takaguri. So in this bracket, so far, we've got Rick Wall, Calvin Carter, and Extreme. We're awaiting the arrival of three more individuals. And uh, for this young man, for Calvin Carter, you know, he's got to be on cloud nine right now. He won a championship earlier. You know, he, I'm surprised you're not downplaying him. Uh, I'm, I don't downplay the wrestlers, JD. You always are. No, I don't. You downplayed me being the world champion. You didn't believe But me. you're not the world champion. I, I, I know this for world. a fact that you're not the world champion in PWA. You're not there. You don't know. I that. am there. I'm there every night. I am the commentator of PWA. I call the you matches. Are? Yes. I've never seen you before. Really? You've never seen my my lovely brown hair staring at you're you lying. in the matches? You're, li you're a liar. I can tell that about you now. As uh, entrant number 14 here, Gabriel Graves, this young man has had a lot of travel issues uh, getting to the shows uh, due to the weather that has been outside on the northeast coast of the United States. Uh, for the month of January here, Gabriel Grace has been stuck, unfortunately, in a lot of uh, the snow drifted areas. So a lot of flight cancellations and a lot of delays. So this is the actual debut of Gabriel Graves compared to when he was supposed to make his debut back at the beginning of January against uh, the former James Anderson, who was released early, earlier this morning by FFW. I don't believe that story either. I don't, I don't. I think he. I think he purposely delayed all those things. I think he did it on purpose so he didn't have to work. But if you don't work, you don't get paid. So I mean, I don't know what contract you have, but when I don't work, I still get paid because that's just the way things go. Look at this guy. This guy's. This guy's the winner right here. He's gonna win it. Entrant number fifteen, Tyrone Jennings. He is. This is the halfway mark, ladies and gentlemen. The halfway down. mark, meaning halfway to win for this guy. Halfway to win. I, I, I like your I like your thought process there, JDL. Yeah. You ever heard of that? It's, a, it's an old saying. Well, now it is. Now, yeah, now it is an old saying because you said it about 30 seconds ago. But yeah. I'm not taking anything away from Tyrone Jennings, ladies and gentlemen. But you are. No, don't listen to JDL. I don't think that Tyrone can do this. He can't do it on his own. That's for sure. What? What? He can't do it on his own. He, that's why he's in the tag team. And look at this, his tag team partner, Damian Wallace, won the other half of Heresy and, and their partner, Victor Jones. So Damian and Tyrone are both in the same bracket. So clearly you know these two are gonna work together. Yeah, they, they are gonna work together and that's the best thing to do. That's the smartest thing to do. That's why I said halfway to victory. Now they're fully way to victory. And then they're gonna end up in the ring together, and they're both gonna and they're both gonna settle out their problems. You know, you should really listen to me more. I know what I'm talking about. Definitely, you don't know what you're talking about. What? Most what? definitely, you have no idea what you're talking about, JDL. No. I, I hope that Damian Wallace gets eliminated first. He is a pompous young man. Pomp? That's a. What is your problem? That's unprofessional. Well, here we go. We're, we're getting this underway right away. And Calvin Carter, their big boot right to Damian Wallace from the get-go here. And Extreme making a beeline there for Gabriel Graves. And, and the big men, Brick Wall and Tyrone, they're battling it out. The medical personnel still attending to uh, Darren Trinidad. You know, so at least for the time being, Trinidad able to get a breather here. That's unprofessional. So you insult the wrestlers 
How dare you? Well, did you see that? Wallace able to pull himself back into the ring. I, I give Wallace credit being able to pull himself back into the ring. Oh, the one thing, the one good thing you've done all night. I give him credit for that as extreme there, that seated uh, suplex uh, inverted slam there to Gabriel Graves. This has been a very exciting breakdown run. I'm glad that you were my yes. broadcast partner. I'm very glad for that. This has been a fun night so far. And we're only halfway through it, apparently, because we're only at fifth entrant number 15. And I'm, I'm glad that I can put up with your stinkiness. You know, I don't know why between you and all the other commentators, you all feel like I stink. But honestly, I think it's you guys that stink. I think oh, that's... First of all, what, what cologne do you use? What body, what body, you know, freshener do you use? That's really rude. Well, I'm, I'm just saying that that's a personal discussion for another day. But you can call someone pompous and, and arrogant and as he goes back and forth by extreme. Extreme and Gabriel Graves are going back and forth like you said. That's what I said. I was agreeing with what you said. As extreme, they're trying to eliminate Gabriel Graves. You know, for a smart guy, you sure repeat yourself a lot. <laughs> well, it's not about repeating myself a lot. I'm just I'm reiterating the fact to the fans on the team. Listen, we can't have this conversation around. Pick, let's pick. And pick Gabriel Grace has been eliminated. Extreme now has the most eliminations in the you match with four. I got Brick. I got my eyes on Brick Wall. Brick Wall is the future. Like I said, he is a strong young kid. He's hot. He's still hungry. He still wants it. He's gonna win. He's the biggest one out of all of them. But I no, thought no he extreme said... guy with no fun. I'm sorry for swearing. No middle name or first name. But I thought you said that uh, Tyrone Jennings was going to win that. Ladies and gentlemen, I do apologize for the crassness of JDL. Yes, I'm sorry for that. This is, uh, unfortunately, this is uh, this is live broadcast television, so it's hard to uh, it's hard to catch something like that as he's saying it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let him say that, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, you know, it, it does happen as extreme here, still with four eliminations. He has more eliminations than anybody else. And just to reiterate, JDL said that Tyrone Jennings was going to win this bracket. I did not. I never said that. That is exactly what you said. I deny that statement. You can deny it all that you You make up stories a lot. That's your problem. You make up stories, you downplay people, and then you tell me something I'm not. I am the world champion. I picked up Bronson, big Bronson. You know that guy that almost looks like Santa? I picked him up, Madison Square Garden, 60,000 people. Um, you just haven't seen the video yet. Oh, wow. I was there. Wait, did, did you record it with Potato? Okay. You're mocking me, aren't you? I'm not mocking you, I promise. <laughs> As extreme there, running through da uh, Damian Wallace, just completely ran through him. Now look at look at Extreme here doing some work on Calvin Carter here in the corner. I'm waiting for for Heresy to start working together and uh, speak of the devil. Look at this quick wall now. He may be getting uh he might be setting up for a pounding from, from Heresy here as as Damon Wallace and Tyrone start working. They're starting to work together here in this matchup and with them working together, there's a good chance that they could theoretically eliminate a lot of people here in the breakdown room. You see, see the thing is, you get me so fired up, I start cussing. And, and this is why we have this type of pot. This is why me and you have a hard time working together. Because you get me fired up, <gasps> and then you throw things in my face, and you mock me, and then you tell me something I didn't do. Who just got eliminated? Extreme just eliminated Kelvin Carter there. Thanks for coming, Kelvin. I mean, nothing against Kelvin Carter. He is the adrenaline champion, but yeah. the rumble was not his night. You know, it was not his night for Extreme. <laughs> Pardon the pun. You know extreme I was success. behind him the whole time. You were down playing. I was behind him the whole time. But as you see here, uh, Extreme going to work on, on Tyrone Jennings, breaking up the two on one that was happening in Brick Wall. We have three big, big guys in this matchup. Brick Wall, Tyrone, do. and Extreme. And we have one small game in Wallace. I'm, I'm, go I'm going for the underdog. I'm going for the little guy. You think Damian Wallace is going to do this? You think that Damian Wallace is going to last yeah. through all the other way? Like, like I said before, David and Goliath. Like I said, David won. Look at Extreme now. Oh my, oh, he picked up Tyrone Jennings. Jennings is on the verge of being eliminated and Damian uh, being beat up right now by Brick Wall. Maybe going to try to save his tank. No, he's not going to try to save Tyrone. Tyrone, thanks for coming. You have been eliminated by Extreme. Look at Extreme strutting his muscles here. Yeah. 
For a guy that doesn't have a first or a last name, he sure can strut. He can definitely strut as, look at Brick Wall, basic suplex to uh, See, Damian Brick Wallace. Wall is the future. Well, so far, every person that you've said was going to last has been eliminated. That's not true. That is very true. I said, okay, you know what? I don't need to go back in history when I said Wait a second. It's in the DVD. Extreme with the big, big derailer there to Damian Wallace. Yeah. Yeah, people get derailed when he hears his name. That's what they do. And uh, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. My uh, my microphone cut out for a second. As uh, Damon Wallace here and Brick Wall, surprisingly, working together. Uh, yeah, see, they're, they're trying to cut you out. See that? See, they want me to be the commentator from now on. I, I don't know about all that. As uh, I'm the new I'm the new Chris Billy. Uh, it's Christopher Billings. That's what I said. You said Chris Billy. I don't remember. As extreme here. You know, Extreme is dictating the pace of every bracket that he's been in this far. I know this is only a second bracket, but he's dictating right now. Wait a second, wait a second. Damien Wallace up on his... Oh, Jesus! Oh. Just powerbomb to Damien Wallace. Oh, wait a second. Brickwall might eliminate Extreme here. B Baker allows that to happen? Well, this is this is anything goes in this environment. And wait a second. Oh! Power bombs. Like that. What a reverse, by the way. That's what I'm saying. Extreme now sending Brick Wall onto the apron. Brick Wall tried to pick it up off, you know, pick up an, an easy win. Elimination off of Extreme. Extreme at seven eliminations, ladies and gentlemen. This is an unsafe work environment. I can tell you this now. People are getting power bomb drop on their head. You know, you're downplaying people. It's just, it's a whole thing. Well, right now, with, ooh, Brick Wall with a big knee. And, and now it's come down to the two big men. Who do you think is going to win out of these two? Extreme or Brick Wall? Brick Wall at seven, or Extreme at seven eliminations, Brick Wall at zero eliminations. I'm telling you, Brick Wall is the future. He, he, he has a shot. He could take down DH or Die Hard, whatever they call him. I don't know if. Take him down, I don't know throw him over the top rope. I don't know if Brick Wall would want to do that. Die Hard. I mean, Die Hard. Way back, you know, they're, they're in a faction together. We're in the chosen ones together. So, if anything, if if Brick Wall lasts that long, don't you think that maybe he might just get over the top rope for Die Hard? You know, all friendships end, all relationships end. The sooner you realize this, the better me and you're going to get along. But right now, Brick Wall is dishing out some pain to Extreme. Our medical personnel has informed us. That they're gonna give uh, Darren Trinidad a few moments to try to, you know, get his body back up to where it needs to be to get back into this matchup because Darren Trinidad is still in the Rumble, ladies and gentlemen. He's still in the Rumble. He's not physically in the matchup right now. They've, they've escorted him backstage. We're just waiting for him to come back out. But apparently they're still doing their checks on him as Extreme and Brick Wall here in the ring throwing down. Here, here's a fun fact you didn't know about me. I, I had, well, not had, I still do, have every title in PWA at the moment. I have every single title. Oh, I see. So you have the, the two announced championships in PWA. Yes, I do. Now, as, you, as you see, Extreme thought he had Brickwall eliminated, but he was incorrect. Why did you say that word, incorrect? Well, he thought. You call me a liar? You're saying I'm, I don't have it? No, Brickwall was... You know, Extreme thought he eliminated Brick Wall, but he didn't. And Brick Wall with that big right hand, and that, now he's got to oh, lift it. Punch. He's got to lift Extreme up and then throw Extreme over the top rope. Unfortunately, that big right hand does not give you an elimination. It, you know what? If this was a normal match, one, two, buckle my shoe, three, you would have been done. Oh, and Extreme counters that, the spear. You got to believe that's what Brick Wall was looking for was a big spear. Extreme countered it, turned it back around, and now, wait a second, Extreme here. Big clothesline sending Brick Wall over the top rope. Extreme now eight eliminations, ladies and gentlemen. Extreme continues on into the next bracket. Hey. What do you have to say about that, JDL? You said that Brick Wall was the future. You know what? I take back my previous statement. Now, this is going to be a good one right here. 
this man, you know, that uh, that's getting ready to come out number 17. He's had a hard fought mat or hard fought month as well. Not, oh, God. not to the same extent of what Darren Trinidad has, but this man, Hollywood Ron Corleone, he's got, you know, he's had a big target painted on his back by Steve Baker. He's been very outspoken against the Haynes brothers, Steve Baker, and Jerry Graham, the current FFW champion. So for, for Ron to be put into this rumble, he had entrance spot number 29. He had entrance spot number 29, but he lost a match against Trey Haynes, which then put him at entrance spot number 17. When I see Ron, I see an owl. When I think of an owl, I think of an owl coming down, scooping down, and getting its prey. It either fails or it succeeds. He has a 50-50 chance of winning tonight. I can I can definitely agree with that uh, in this at this juncture anyways. Yeah. At this juncture, Hollywood Ron still has a 50-50 chance of going all the way through. I mean Hollywood Ron very strong. He's got a good amount of stamina if if I don't say so myself. I've had the pleasure of calling uh, quite a few of his matches. Yeah. So I would definitely say stamina is in his favor. But this young man, Travis Porter, number 18, probably the, one of the smallest men in this bracket. But for Travis Porter, I mean, I love, I love this kid. You know, he, he's all about the fans. But I don't think that Travis Porter stands much of a chance. You know, unfortunately, I just, I don't feel that Travis Porter is going to be able to go the distance. But hopefully, you know, hopefully he can. I, you know what? I, I'm sorry to say this, but I, I don't think Travis Porter has it in him. I, I think he's he's he has obstacles to overcome, and I don't think he's ready for this match. Well, I, I, I don't think that it's, he's not ready for the match. I just think that, uh, you know, it, if he would have entered maybe later in the round, he would have stood a better chance. And Randy Lynch here getting ready to come out. Entrant number 19, another adrenaline weight class wrestler. His tag team partner, Alex McNabb, is also scheduled to appear in the Breakdown Rumble tonight. So we're up to entrant 19, Randy Lynch. You know, this is, this man is built like, like a fire hydrant. He's, he's adrenaline weight class, he's very small in weight, but he's built like a heavyweight. He stands at a staggering six foot tall. He weighs yeah. 220 pounds, but he's built like like a Jerry Graham or a Die Hard or a, a bona fide heavyweight. He's just a built young man. You always have to do that. You always got to pair something with a Die Hard. You, you just can't get off that train. Let's 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 move on from that. Let's talk about the real problem here. Let's talk about the real issue. Why is he walking so slow? Well, he's casually taking his time getting to the ring. I mean, there's no rush for him. We have time restraints on here, don't we? You have time restraints? Well, at a pay-per-view event like the break, like breakdown, I mean, we don't really have a, a time restraint per se. Of course, you don't have no rules. You just let people power bomb people outside, get dropped on their head. But this is an unsafe work environment, and you're kind of unprofessional. I don't want to say that to you. No, it's, it's that's just the wrestling business. I've been in this business long enough. I've seen it happen enough times. Uh, like entry number twenty, Mark Lester, a former school teacher. This man used to teach science. No, he didn't. Yes, the school teacher, number 20, Mark Wesley. He hung up the notebooks at school for a pair of wrestling boots. I don't even feel like that's the proper wording. You can't hang up books. Well, you can if it's a binder. Okay. That's enough. That, okay, you know what? C call, call, call the school. Don't, 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 don't correct me. Well, at this moment, the only thing that's going on is Mark Lester, you know, turning to the fans as he's getting in the ring. We're waiting. And for number 21, the tag team partner of Randy Lynch, Alex oh, McNabb. No one likes him. Well, we've got Alex McNabb and Randy Lynch in the same bracket. The last bracket we had, the, ha the or not the Haynes brothers, but we had Heresy together. So I think McNabb and Lynch, I think that they, they might actually be able to do something cohesive and work together. It's a big word for you, cohesive. Well, I tend to use a lot of big words. Oh, of course you do. Look at McNabb here, a smile on his face. You know, he's got a relatively good entrance number at 21. Very good you know entrance. what? 
He walks faster than the other guy. I'll tell you that, I walks a lot faster. I'm, I have a business meeting after this, and I, and I can't, you know, I have to do contract signing, I have to take pictures with my world title, and then I have to go pick up Bronson again at another showing that's not on TV or not aired, and you're not there to see it. I see, I see. <laughs> it's just a so. elusive matchup that's going to be happening, right? As, uh, as you're seeing on your screen, our elimination counter, and again, before the officials can even signify, go ahead and start. Right from the get-go, these guys are just hungry, they're ready to go. Extreme with a staggering eight eliminations so far, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that belly-to-belly -belly by Ron there. That Beautiful execution. Ex exactly, look at Extreme here lifting up Travis Porter high above the ring here, slamming him down. Extreme wow. probably could have eliminated Porter right there. You know, that could break your ribs, what Extreme just did there. That. That drop down on the shoulder can break your ribs. It might break two, maybe three, or maybe one. We don't know. There's, there's a good chance of, you know, any of that happening as Extreme here. Sending Travis Porter onto the ring apron. And uh, if Travis Porter can't hang on, then he will be eliminated. You know, I don't want Extreme to win, but if he's willing to powerbomb, power, power by cut. If he's willing to powerbomb somebody outside the ring, that's it. That's a heart of a champion. Right I don't want to say that. But if you bring this up to me, I'm going to deny it. Let's move on. Okay, as uh, as extreme here, making a he's making his intent perfectly clear. He's trying to just eliminate Travis Porter. As Mick, he's a cheater. That's what he is. As McNabb trying to eliminate Mark Lester here, and and Paul Leone, look at this big power bomb. Oh wait a second, Randy Lynch able to get out of there with a big neck breaker there, and now Travis Porter trying to eliminate Extreme. This is, I, I love the rumble for the fact of how crazy it can be. And look at this, Extreme might be getting, oh no, Extreme fighting back. Again, like you said, the heart of a champion for Extreme. This could be the year that Extreme goes out. I don't remember saying that, that's ridiculous. But, you know, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, uh, Bob. You know, I can't stress this enough. You have totally, you know, hyped up Extreme like he's some big dude. He is a big guy. He's a very big Every guy. Every single time you hype these people up, they all of a sudden win. What is it? Like, what are you doing? Well, look at Extreme. Another elimination. Nine eliminations now. Travis Porter oh, eliminated. Nine from eliminations. The... Don't, don't, don't get... See, you're a numbers guy yet again. No one cares about the number. Okay, St they care about the winner. Statistics are everything. And wait a second, look. Oh, oh Mark Lester double DDT to both McNabb and to Extreme, but Extreme starting to get back to his feet. As a See, double DDT, the number two. Yeah. Number two. Yeah, it's, it's all about statistics, JDM. That's, yeah. that's what's important when it comes to matches. And Randy Lynch almost eliminated Corleone there. And look at... You're, you're getting me flustered right now. That's what you're doing. You're flustering me. Look at Corleone trying to eliminate Lynch. As Mark Lester is going to go for a ride here from Extreme in, in your bottom right corner with the D Railer. And McNabb saving his tag team partner. They're keeping his tag team partner in the matchup. You know what I hate? I hate the fact that sometimes I have to agree with you on some things. I don't like the fact that I have to do this. So don't rub it back in my face that I do it. Okay, don't do not do that to me. Well, there's nothing wrong with admitting that I I'm right. I don't want to I mean, I am a professional broadcast. You, you know, keep saying that, but I don't believe you. My resume speaks for itself. I don't want to see your resume. And you're not getting, You're not getting a job at PWA. I already have a job at PWA as McNabb and Lynch there. I'm there every every taping as McNabb and Lynch working together here against Ron Corleone, extreme singling out Mark Lester. And this is why I'm the pound for pound, probably one of the best broadcast announcers out there. I'm not saying that because I'm arrogant, but it's just because I can call action when there's multiple men in the world. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the best. Wait, you just wait. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to do commentary again one day, some way, somehow, and I'm going to be there, and I'm going to outshine you like I'm doing now. Well, from what I'm, from what I understand, you're scheduled to be here on Monday, so I hope you show up. How do you know things before I do? Because I, I am literally part of the creative team of FFW, so I know when contracts are signed. This is. 
this is ludicrous, my friend, and I'm not talking about. Well, look at McNabb and Lynch are working on eliminating Ron Corleone, and McNabb and Lynch working together as a tag team to eliminate the one of the biggest men in this matchup. Wait, look at this. It looks like they might. Are, are maybe McNabb and Lynch going to duke it out here? Are they going to? Oh, wait a second. Look at this. McNabb yes. going for extreme here. McNabb with that beautiful execu <laughs> executed suplex. Sorry about that. You know, I got a weird smell. It's just you stinking. But yeah, Ooh. beautiful suplex. Big head kick there. As uh, Like I said, I mean, this is... The, the, the breakdown rumble is such an unpredictable matchup. I've seen many of these breakdown rumbles, and let me tell you, I was impressed with some of the talent and, you know, some of the things that came out of it. Well, you know, last year, uh, the winner of the TPP breakdown rumble was mm -hmm. Craig Hazard, and he went on to become the TPP champion at the time. Wow. You know, and for Extreme, when he made his debut, uh, in the Breakdown Rumble, or competed in the debut in Breakdown Rumble in 2012, which during, like I said, he eliminated 15 people. He's already up to nine eliminations. He's very close to breaking his record. Very, very close. Yeah. See, I'm, I don't believe in the numbers. I believe in the end result, and that is the win. That's all that should matter is the win. Numbers don't mean anything at the end of the day. Numbers don't get you victories. Well, the ending. theoretically, numbers do get you victories. Okay. Yeah. You know, I like like you like to brag about. I've been a wrestler for a long time. I know what I'm talking about. You've been a commentator. You're good at commentating. I'm a wrestler. You've had how many matches? One. Exactly. And I'm wanting to know as McNabb and Lynch are working together on Mark Lester, and oh, Mark Lester has been eliminated. McNabb and Lynch, both two eliminations. You see, I was behind Mark Lester. And then you downplayed him, and he lost. This is this is it. I, I didn't downplay Mark Lester at all. You downplayed him, saying he wasn't going to win. I I don't recall. I, I do recall. I don't remember that. As, as Randy Lynch here, you know, You're ridiculous. Unfortunately for Extreme, this is not a good situation. He's he's in there against a tag. So if they work together, they can eliminate Extreme. I think. And look at this! Oh, Extreme rolled out of the way. On a turn of a dime, Extreme able to... Wow, what punches by Extreme that. Those were remarkable punches. Very, very... Reminds me when I'm in the ring. Reminds me when... I don't know if you're that good in the ring. That, see, now you're downplaying me. I'm just saying, Extreme has already eliminated nine, nine people. You know, I'm going to go back on tape and see what you say about me on PWA. I'm pretty sure you don't work that well. I, I'm guaranteeing you that I do. <laughs> Never, I've never heard of you in my life. Never in your life? Yeah. Okay. As uh, as McNabb and Lynch, you're working on Extreme, and, and that's the thing, Extreme's got to figure, he's got to get some separation, here, and that's just the, the truth. He's got to get separation between these two, otherwise Extreme is going to get a win. It's, it's a two-on-one environment. Extreme, like you like to say, with the Nimbus, he only has a, ten, a one out of 10 chance of winning this. You know, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to take that one where he's going to lose, you know? Well, even in this bracket, Extreme has a 33% chance. Okay. It's just, it's numbers, it's statistics, it's it's proof. You always do that to me. You, you, I see a number, you say a higher number. You can't just let me have my day. It, you can't, you can't. I'm just saying he's got a 30, actually he's got less than a 33% chance. Because if they work together to eliminate him, it's not going to end well. And that would make it almost 15%. Oh. Now, wait a second. Extreme. Oh. Wait. Oh, I thought for sure he's going to send him into the corner, but he didn't there. And Extreme with a big headbutt to McNabb. And Extreme hitting one knee. He's got to be, you know, he's got to be getting tired. Seems a little bit dazed and confused there. He didn't know where he was, it seems like. Well, for the better part of the past few minutes, he's been smashed by two opponents at the same time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm noticing this now. I mean, I, I hand it to Extreme. He's hanging in here. Oh, wait a second. Extreme. Wait a second. Oh, and eliminating Randy Lynch, and McNabb did not help Randy Lynch. And, and what is McNabb? McNabb now has to eliminate Extreme, but Randy Lynch still standing at ringside. 
Uh, he has not left the, the ringside area over there as McNabb here has a good chance of continuing on if he can eliminate Extreme. I mean, the damage has been done to Extreme. He just has to eliminate it. That's all he's got to do. If Extreme wins this, I'm going to be very upset. I'm going to get in the ring and I'm going to teach him a lesson. Okay. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I know I said my shoulder hurts, but I think it's feeling better now. I'm going to get it. Wait a second. Extreme just eliminated McNabb. And Extreme now with 11 eliminations, ladies and gentlemen. He moved, Extreme moves on to the next bracket. As uh, McNabb now uh, saying something to Randy Lynch ringside. Not sure what's going on. We, we're trying to get a, a camera over there to try to get closer to McNabb to see what he's saying. And McNabb pushed Lynch. And wait a second. What is... I, it sounds like Lynch was saying, wait. And Oh, Jesus! A, McNabb just turned his back on his tag team partner. Do, do you condone something like that? Would I condone something like that? You're asking me now, now you're asking me? I'm just saying, you know, uh, it looked like Randy Lynch was saying, hey, you know, we didn't win the Rumble together, but there's, a, there's always going to be other chances. Well, you, you obviously live in an unsafe work environment, so I'm not surprised something like that would happen. I know I do not support that. I would not play dirty like that. I've never done that in my life. Never in your life as uh, we're awaiting entrant number 22, Rollin Ryder, this young man former FFW internet champion lost his title to Lance Owens about two months ago and has been on a recourse of trying to re-get some self uh, worth I guess so to speak I mean he's a great wrestler but he's got to get himself to uh, that championship level again you know and he seems like he could be a cheater. Oh, you know, Rollin Ryder definitely, I, I've seen him step outside of the rules. I've seen him attack wrestlers after their matches. You know, that, yeah. that doesn't surprise me one bit. That's, but you're talking about, you know, JDL, you're talking about stepping outside the rules and never yeah. doing a dirty tactic in your life. But I literally saw you last night, on Friday night, on BWA Live, I saw you win your match with a low blow. I, when, when, did, when was this, Friday? Friday night, you you won your match yeah. via a low blow, because- That wasn't me. That, that, was, that, wasn't that me. was very much you. The company is trying to frame me, they're trying to make me look bad, so that's, that's it's, it's, it's a common misperception. They've been doing it for years, you know? Before we went national on TV, they were doing it for years. Okay, all right. As, uh, Not me. Yeah, definitely, not definitely not you, right? Of yeah, course no, not. no. no. And, and ladies and gentlemen, just keep in mind, tomorrow night, uh, PWA brings brings live to you the uh, the first pay per view for PWA, Adrenaline, and this the man next to me, uh, John uh, JDL, uh, will not be. He's not scheduled on that show, ladies and gentlemen. As Lance Owens getting ready to come to the ring, entrant number twenty. Why keep saying that? I'm just, I'm just letting you know that you're not scheduled to appear at all. I, I want to talk. I want to talk. I, oh. As Lance Owens, you're trying to get himself psyched up. And, uh, you know, from what I understand, this bracket is only going to have four wrestlers in it, ladies and gentlemen. So apparently... As soon as this pay-per-view is over, I'm going to go cuss. Well, they're going to... Well, you already did that once live on air. Okay, so. well... Now you saw that in my face. No, oh, I'm just, just reminding you that this is live television. And uh, we're, here we go. Look at this from the get-go. Rollin Ryder making a beeline for Lance Owens. Extreme making a beeline on Victor Jones here. These are entering 22, 23, and 24. Ladies and gentlemen. Extreme currently at 11 eliminations. Darren Trinidad still outside the ring here. Or outside the ring area at the upper part of the screen laying down on the ground. He has not moved you know, since uh, Extreme gave him uh, those various uh, derailer maneuvers. The, the derailer. Well, that, the derailed by his name. That's that's what that's what he calls that maneuver. He calls it the derailer as Extreme here, trying to eliminate Victor Jones, as uh, Rollin Ryder trying to eliminate Lance Owens. I'm the executioner, but no one believes me. 
wait a second. Oh, that bow backbreaker there from Victor Jones and, and all four of the men in this in this area of the rumble. Now, especially Victor Jones, Lance Owens, and Rowan Ryder. All those all four of these men had the capability to become main event wrestlers, to be the champion. They all have that possibility. And it is they do. it's a real possibility at this juncture. I mean, entering at 24, you still have a really good chance of winning the rumble. As you see, extreme using his strength there, Victor Jones, as Lance Owens here working over Rowling Wright. Hip squeak. Well, that hip squeak defended his championship earlier against the boy that you picked, Trey Haynes. Yeah, I was behind him the whole time. Who were you behind? Trey Haynes. You were voting for him the whole time. No, I was. I was pulling all four Lance Owens. I literally yeah, said. Hip squeak is a friendly name, by the way. It's a friendly name. I bet it is. And oh, a big right, a series of right hands there from Rowan Ryder. And now Victor Jones trying to eliminate Extreme. Oh, wait, oh, and Extreme able to hold on there. Oh, look at look at Extreme. You see, you, you hype up Extreme, wait, and then that. next thing you know. Oh, and he everyone's Extreme just eliminated Victor Jones. Extreme there you go. Extreme 12 eliminations. He is three eliminations from tying his 2012 record. And there's, and there's still six positions left in the Rumble. No. Extreme could do it. He could break his record no, and become the winner of the Breakdown Rumble. Look at this Extreme slamming down Lance Owens. It looks like Rowan Ryder's trying to get Extreme to work with. You ever heard of Jack and the Beanstalk? Yes. Okay, there was a giant up there, Jack one. Hip Squeak's gonna do it, and that's a friendly name. That's not an insult. It's a friendly name. He's gonna take out. He's gonna take out this guy over here in the white, and he's gonna take out Mr. One Name Extreme. I, you know, I hope that Lance Owens does. It would be spectacular if Lance Owens could do that. You know, I, I think he he. It would be an amazing. It would make for an amazing night for Lance Owens. Imagine defending your championship and winning the run. It'd be right. amazing. You know, I for me personally. I would love for everybody to win the win, but I know that that can't happen. That's what I'm saying. I know it's not possible. So, given the situation in the certain brackets, I know that there can only be one man that continues on. And numbers show that there's a good chance that Extreme could be that man. You are a nerd. That is what you are with these numbers. Nerd. Every time you say numbers, nerd, I'm going to say that to you. Okay, that's perfectly fine because Extreme still has total eliminations. Nerd. How many eliminations do you have? I wasn't. First of all, first of all, I wasn't even scheduled to be in the Royal Rumble. If I was, I would have won. Extreme, I think, would have tossed you off first. Oh, 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 oh. Just saying. See that? You downplayed me now. Oh, oh, oh Jesus! Oh, Lance oh. Owens just got hung up right on the on the top rope there with that that alley oop tight power bomb. I lost some teeth there. That, that's what I'm saying. I mean, but Lance Owens resiliently pulling himself back to his feet, trying to stay in this, you know, trying to keep himself in this at all costs. And wait a second, now Extreme here. He might be looking for another derailer. Big derailer there to Lance Owens. Ryder going off the ropes, and he hit, he hit out the knee of Extreme, and that's what they've got to do in this situation. They've got to, even though there's differences between uh, Ryder and Owens, they have to work together to, to eliminate Extreme. Not only his knee, he hit the side of his knee. So, you know, that, that's more painful from the, you know, like, that's more painful from a front or back. He hit the side. Like, your knee doesn't even bend that way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's only one man I've seen their knee bend that way, and that was somebody you told me not to mention anymore, so. You, know, you gotta, you did it again. You bring up him again. What, are you on his fan club? Like, what, 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 what? I'm just saying, it's, it's a big night for Die Hard. Oh, and, and Lance Owens got eliminated by Rollin Ryder. I'm just saying it's a big night for Die Hard. He's still got an appearance to make in the Rumble, you know, and it's a big deal because it, this is... downplay him. I will when he gets into the ring, maybe, you know, but See? Die Hard, this is his, the first time we've ever seen Die Hard in the Rumble. Every time we ever had any breakdown Rumble, Die Hard was either retired from in-ring comp competition or he was the champion, so he didn't have to compete in the Rumble. This is the first time ever. You 
see you choose who to downplay. That might be your thing, but that's not mine. I downplay the people I know that are actually in the news. I know they're wins. They're not going to go anywhere in this business. That's who I. That's what I do. Your rider, as you saw, with that head kick there to, to Extreme, and now calling Extreme to his feet, and Ryder might. Ryder stands a good chance of winning this. Ryder has no chance of winning this. Okay. He has a great chance here. As he's in the ring with a guy that has no first from the fame. And 12 eliminations. There. <laughs> and, oh, Ryder, big right hand, and right to the ribs. And as much as you may say that he has no chance of winning, uh, he's giving extreme run for his money. He is. And, I, and I'm going to agree with you. I don't want to agree with you, but I'm going to agree with you. And I don't choose to. I just, we just happen to have to share the same type of epitome, you know? So, yeah. Well, look at, look at Ryder here. Gonna fly that, ooh, that uh, diving forearm there, right onto the, the chin of Extreme, and that's not gonna do your, your teeth any favor. But Extreme, big backdrop there, turning it around. No, you know what I like about Ryder? And what do you like about Ryder? He actually has a reasonable name. Yeah, that's his first and last name, Alan Ryder. Yeah, reasonable. Okay, as extreme tossing Ryder yeah. into the corner here. And Ryder doesn't think about numbers. Are you sure? He just wants the win. Because Ryder has two R's on his on his tights there. I'm just putting out more numbers for you. What is wrong? You are a nerd. Oh, wait a second, extreme big boot to Rowland Ryder. Elimination number 13 for Extreme. As we are awaiting the arrival of entrance number 25, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hearing a theme song play. I'm not really sure who this is. I can hear it yeah. playing, but uh, you know, for extreme, this is this is big. He's he's at 25. He's almost won the breakdown run. Yeah, almost. He's close. He's extremely close. Or the part in the pun. As extreme as well, wait, is that is Jordan Moore and and only an FFW or TPP the T under the under the TPP 2K umbrella can you see wrestlers of years past making appearances in the breakdown world? The last time I saw Jordan Moore compete was over two years ago, and he looks like he's in great shape here. And he's a former tag team partner of extreme. Uh, you know, back in 2011 and 2010, they were tag team champions, multiple time tag team champions. Former tag team champions are going to go at it here. I don't know how you remember all this stuff. I would never remember any of this stuff that you're talking well, about. Well, they're important events that happened within TPP, FFW, in the TPP 2K umbrella history. So I'll never yeah, forget. Yeah, nerdy stuff. No, yeah. not nerdy stuff. And looking at Extreme saying it's game over for Jordan Moore, but Jordan Moore is going to come out swinging, but Extreme here, big counter. Who's your prediction for this this small bracket of two people? Well, you know, take away the numbers and nerd calculations that you come up with in your head. I'm with I'm with more on this one. I'm all I'm all I I think that Jordan can do it. I mean, he's done miraculous things. He's one of the first men to you know pin Die Hard for the TPP Championship at the time. Yeah, but. Extreme has been in here a long time. He's a strong son of a gun. See, yet again, you downplay the character I have, and you, you know, whatever with the, with, with Extreme. You hype him up like he's some type of big dude with muscles and long hair. But he is a big dude with muscles and long hair. I'm just pointing out the obvious. You know, have you ever even been to prom before? Has a girl ever talked to you in your life? I was married. Oh, uh, you were married? Oh, really? You were? Yes. I got tired of your numbers. Well, maybe she did, because I did make a six-figure income, or maybe that just wasn't enough. Oh, now you're going to... Oh, okay, now you're going to brag about your salary. <laughs> just, just pointing out more numbers for you, <laughs> JDL. All right. More stomping away here. Look, look at those punches by Moore. See, Moore has the potential. He has two names. He has two, you know... For a name, he doesn't just have one, you know. He has a first, a middle, and end, you know. Yeah. And extreme over here, just extreme. Oh, boring. 
get a job. Well, I mean, look at Extreme, but he's making these wrestlers job to him right now. I mean, he's doing oh, it. That's funny how you say the word job. Extreme going off the ropes. So you might be looking to eliminate Jordan, but wait a second. Jordan pulled down the top rope, and Extreme that's has been eliminated. Right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. I, they should chant thank you more. And Extreme here staring at Jordan, and, uh, and Jordan looks like Jordan saying, hey, man. I'm going all the way tonight, and Extreme walking away with his head held high here. I mean, you know who's next, don't you? Jordan Moore still in the Rumble. Entrant 26 is Die Hard. Oh, God. This is going to, ladies and gentlemen, business has just picked up. Oh, really? Business has just picked up? Jordan Moore versus Die Hard? This is a tale as old as time. Teacher and student? Get your selfie stick. I'm just saying, you, we're talking the legendary, uh, longest reigning TPP champion ever. This man. I don't. I didn't. I don't even hear you anymore. Turn off my headset. <laughs> as uh, as diehard here, look at the cold stare. I, I don't think he's got. I don't know if he still has negative feelings towards Jordan Moore or not. You know, it was tech. You know, if you knew history, Jordan Moore was a man that forced diehard into retirement. You know, I, I've seen Die Hard have amazing battles against some amazing opponents, but it was always Jordan Moore that pushed Die Hard that much further. I'm surprised you didn't name the opponents this time. Take a picture with them, why don't you? I would love to take a picture with Jordan Moore and Die Hard in a, in a friendly You are. Player. You just kiss his butt. That's all you do. It's not even about kissing butt, because Die Hard isn't even the acting CEO of FFW anymore. I've grown to respect the man because of what he's put himself through in the many years of his wrestling. So I may not agree with everything he does, you know, he's in the ring. I mean, he steps outside the rules, and typically the fans boo him, but they're cheering him right now. So I have to be supportive of Dino because he changed something in his life to where apparently he appreciates the fans again. And that's a, a big thing for Dyer because he spent the past, what, 15 years being booed by fans. And Dyer, there's a big slap on the headbutt, and this is where it's going to get intense. These two, there's no, I don't think there's any love lost between them. Die Hard is one of those guys that, you know, should have just stayed down, should have stayed in retirement, should have fired you and got someone in here to know what they're doing. And that's me. That's why that's why they called me in because they saw what you were doing was wrong. You're all about numbers, nerd. That's I'm I'm the future of the commentary news. I am the future of I'm the voice of this place. You better get used to it. I don't know about all that is Jordan Moore there with the big knee to, to the ribs of Die Hard. And for those of you that are keeping track, Die Hard has had about six different surgeries on his knees and numerous Numbers. surgeries on his arms. Numbers. And oh, I remember how you told me earlier about ooh and that big power slam, how you broke your fingers in your match and you had to stop the match. Yeah. Yeah. There was a um in Die Hard's yeah. debut match, he broke his entire hand and still wrestled. You're always trying to outdo me. You just can't let up. And that was you in that was in 1994 when he did that. I won the world title in PWA first night. Okay. okay. What did you do? I commentated that night. I don't remember seeing you wrestle for the PWA championship. I don't know what you're watching. Well, as you see, Die Hard is pummeling Jordan Moore right now. This is vintage Die Hard. Look at this, Die Hard, from the second rope. This is high risk for Die Hard. This is high risk for Die Hard. Yeah, this is about the size of his bed frame. This is where he jumps off. And wait a second. Jordan turns around, and Die Hard, oh, and he misses as Jordan Moore sidestepped it. Jordan, and that's the thing. These guys, these two know each other very, very well. They know each Die Hard needs glasses. That's what he needs. Well, you know, Die Hard is currently the oldest man on the roster. How old is he? Uh, I believe, due to, uh, let's see, Dyard was born in 1969. Right. So, he's almost 50 years old. He's... Oh, 50. That's interesting. 47, 47, 48. 47. Or 46 or 47 is how old Dyard. Dyard will be 47, oh, okay. I think, this year. <sighs> Clearly the oldest man currently wrestling. Why is he? Why? Why is he? Why is he in the match? Honestly, because like, he was killing my career. He was forced into the match. He was forced into active competition by Steve Baker. And you know what? I think that the aged diehard is even better than he was before. 
I mean, he may not have the same stamina he had 18 years ago. You know, he may not be able to do the high, a whole bunch of high flying moves and things like that. But I think he's even better now than what he used to be. The legend is even better. Every time I would play a wrestling game, I would make him lose to me. That's what I would do. And Jordan Moore there with that double axe handle right across the face of Die Hard. And neither one of these guys have tried to eliminate each other yet. I, they do. I hope they realize that they have to throw each other over the top rope to win. Like, that's, that's, the, that's how you win this segment. <laughs> that's how you win. Yeah. I, 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 I don't... I, you see... There you go. Now, now, actually, I was about to disagree with you, but you actually made a good point. This is how you win. Oh, he reversed it. Oh, what a move. But, yeah. Wait a second. Die Hard setting it up. No. The Die Hard dropping Jordan no. Moore. No, 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 no. Moore, get up. Get up. Don't let him Don't let him do this to you. He's bringing you down. He's br a long... You know, I'm, I'm next to a negative, Nancy. Get up. Wait a second. Wait a second. Die Hard here in a... Big hot shot, sending it right across Cheater. the chest there, using the ropes as leverage. And like I said, I may not agree with everything that Die Hard does, but like I said, given Die Hard's age, he's gotten better with time. No, this is not the end and for Moore. Moore is going to get, Moore is going to come out this the winner. He's going to go on, and he's going to proceed, and he's going to have a great career, and he's going to be a multiple-time world champion. He's going to have so many world champions, you can't even calculate the numbers. Well, well, you know, Jordan Moore, and more statistics for you, Jordan Moore is the only man in all of TPP2K history to hold every championship at one time. The only man. He's held all variations of the tag team titles. He's, yeah. He held the old hardcore championship. He held the million dollar championship. Nice. He held the internet championship. He also held the intercontinental championship and the TPP championship. Jordan Moore is the only man in history to hold every single championship. More than die hard. So you put that in your uh, headset and listen to it really loud. That's right. He has held more championships than Die Hard, but Die Hard was the longest reigning world champion. Wow. You, yet again, you're trying to out through me. Stop it. But look at Die your big right hand. Another big no, no, right hand. More. This is not happening right now. Can we, can we cut to commercials? No, there's no, no more commercial breaks. And as you saw, Die Hard there with that knee brace, using his knee brace as a weapon there, smashing the forehead of Jordan Moore up against that brace. Wait a second, Jordan Moore out of nowhere. And Die Hard may be bleeding, ladies and gentlemen, as Jordan Moore taunting to the fans, saying, I'm doing this. Jordan Moore stands a good chance of eliminating Die Hard here, but oh, Die Hard counters with the big left hand, and yes, Die Hard is bleeding, ladies and gentlemen. Die Hard's punches are so hard, you can hear the smack from here. That's what I'm saying, Die Hard pulls no punches, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a second, what is okay, Die Hard thinking? Ooh, there's, there's a second knee and a third knee, and... Oh, and, oh, wait a second, Jordan Moore has been eliminated. What? Die Hard Jordan, continues Jordan. on in the breakdown rumble, ladies and gentlemen. Get back up, Jordan. Jordan has been eliminated. And look at this. I don't think this is the last chapter for these two. I would love to see them go at it where there wasn't an over-the-top over rope elimination. I would love to see that one more time, maybe sometime down the line. And look at, look at Die Hard telling Jordan he was thinking ahead there. I'm going to get in there and get him. Die Hard only has to go through four men. Actually, oh. five, I guess, since Trinidad is still technically in the Rumble. But five men, that's all he's got to do. Yeah. I'll, I'll get in there and teach that old man a thing or two. Well, you're more than welcome to jump in there right now and, and go compete I, against Die Hard. And why, you know what? Why are the I Haynes wanna... Brothers theme song playing? Why is their theme it would song be playing? unprofessional if I was. Trey Haynes is not scheduled to be in the Rumble yet. He's entrant 29. We're only up to entrance 27, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? Okay. What is going on? Somebody. Wait a second. Drew Haynes it, is number 27. Is that, a, is that a fan coming out of the audience right now with a belt? No, that is Drew Haynes who holds, you know, the Million Dollar Championship because Steve Baker basically gave it to him, putting him in a match against Junior after Junior just competed in a two-on-one matchup. Where, where is your security? That, that's my question. Well, and, and the, the Haynes Brothers theme song is still playing. And don't tell me that. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Haynes, 28. And entrant 29 is Trey Haynes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all three Haynes Brothers at the same time against, this is great. against one diehard. How can you say this is great? This is great. This is horrible. This is atrocious. 
you make it sound like a bad thing. This is a horrible thing. This is the only way the Hanes truly strive is in a three-on-one environment. Die Hard is an old dog who needs to be put out in the back put down. Well, this man... These guys are the ones to do This it. man, Trey Haynes, man, right? you know, he lost earlier to my boy Lance Owens. No, I was behind Lance Owens. You were behind this guy. You called him Conan. I heard you. No, and, and as you see, Die Hard giving a... He was in the ring. I, it's not on your guys' screen yet, but he gave a very cold stare to all three of the Haynes brothers. I think Die Hard's come into fight, but... I don't know how much fight Die Hard has left in there. This is a three-on-one. The numbers game ultimately is going to work against Die Hard. You know, that's just, that's the way it is. There's no way around it. You know, not at all. And, uh, wait, oh, and big clothesline there from Trey Haynes. And, and now, look at, look at this. Just Yeah, beat him on him. Get him. This is not even, this should not be happening. Oh, and a dirty this, eye this is happening. Enjoy it while you can, because it's the only time we'll ever see it. There we go. Well, yeah. Can't we get Entrant 30 to come into the ring or, or get Darren Trinidad back in there? At least try to even it out a little bit. Die Hard has nothing right now. He's got nobody backing him in this situation. I know Die Hard made a career in TCO out of using the numbers game to his advantage. He doesn't need anything else. He's, he's, he's past his prime. He's ready to go. Get him. Beat him down. Someone pick him up and power bomb. Look at the, the Haynes are just tearing apart Die Hard. Yep. You know. you know the problem is with the Haynes brothers? They have no direction. They need a manager like me to guide them to take out this old man. Oh, wait a second. Drew might be trying to eliminate Die Hard here. And, Get him. And whoa, wait a second. Die Hard's hanging on there. He's dangling on the edge there. Let go of it, Die Hard. Die Hard trying to hang on for dear life here. But wait, 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 wait. Ah, 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 and Die Hard hangs on. Look at that, Die Hard's still fighting here. What is with this guy? Why are you behind this old man? How can you not support Die Hard in this situation? He's in a three-on-one and he's still fighting. Look at I got I got one word for you, actually. Pain. <sighs> and these guys are the future. Wait a second, wait a second, what's going on here? The Haynes brothers are. Wait a second, Dyer trying to pull himself back up. Get him! Wait a, wait a second. Drew, uh, Ryan Haynes here with that, that uh, wrestling mat slam, a basic re wrestling mat slam, nothing fancy, just using his strength, you know, as his greatest weapon. Get him! Wait a second. Please do something. Oh my god. What is. Wait a second. Look at. Oh god. Oh, he's gonna do that spider thing again, that creepy thing that I. He calls this he, he calls it the kiss of death here. And emphatically kissing the forehead of Die Hard and God, that's gotta be it. Yeah. As uh What's happening? The Haynes brothers here are, as Drew Haynes is hoisting Die Hard up. And uh ladies and gentlemen, I I don't like the, the way this is gonna happen. I don't think this is gonna be a good night for Die Hard. And look at Ryan Haynes now has Die, the limp body of Die Hard, Die Hard barely hanging on the ropes here. And Drew Haynes super kicking Die Hard out of the ring. And he emphatically kind of knew that that was going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, there was no way that Die Hard could have lasted. There was no way at all. They need they need to get a pay raise, and they need to get title belts right away. That's what they need. Well, I'm, we're being informed that uh, Darren Trinidad, or, you know, looking at the ring there, Trinidad trying to pull himself back up. The Haynes brothers. Oh, what is this? This guy's still there? He's been there that entire time. He's, he's just, now he's starting to move a little bit. The Haynes brothers here taunting in the ring. And they're all, they're, apparently they're not paying enough attention to, uh, to Darren Trinidad. Trinidad getting back in the ring here. And wait a second, Trinidad eliminating Drew Haynes right over the top rope. And wait a second, Ryan Haynes didn't see him. And, and Trey Haynes completely oblivious to the situation here. Drew, or Darren runs in, clotheslines Ryan. Ryan has been eliminated. And now it's one-on-one. -on -one. Darren Trinidad versus Trey Haynes. And look at this. This is what I'm talking about. This is, Trey, this is an outrage. Darren this Trinidad outrage. has a good chance of still winning the Rumble. This is entrant this number one and entrant 29. Someone come, is there another Haynes person out there somewhere to help us? No, there's only three Haynes brothers. Ugh. 
This is all, and, and uh, Ryan and Drew have not left ringside yet. Three is so uneven. It, it makes me very nervous that they haven't left ringside yet as Trey Haynes here starting to, you know, try to work on Darren Trinidad, but Trinidad, big jawbreaker bringing it back here. Trinidad trying to keep his focus on Trey, but, you know, it's hard to keep your focus when you've got two other man st men standing outside the ring, chomping at the bit. Trinidad trying to do a little bit of damage here to Trey Haynes, just trying to even it out maybe. But Darren Trinidad could go all the way tonight. Trinidad is a hurt puppy. Ooh, he needs to be put down, just like Die Hard. They need to end him, they need to get in the ring, beat him down and throw him over that top rope and make moves after that. You know? Well, wait a second. Wait a second. No. <clears throat> no. Trinidad might be trying to set something up. Wait a second, Trinidad going off the ropes. And a big standing super kick there. It did not eliminate Trey Haynes though, and, and now Trinidad calling Haynes to his feet. And wait a second, Trinidad, a double underhook, and that big DDT. And, and for Trey Haynes, you know, now Trinidad's gotta hoist up that big carcass for Trey Haynes. Don't, don't, don't call wait me. A wait a second, wait a second. Wait, oh my God, and he eliminated Trey Haynes, ladies and gentlemen. Trey Haynes is, and Darren Trinidad, I think he's won the Rumble. Oh, no. I think Darren Trinidad's going to FFWX, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. The Haynes brothers have not left ringside yet, but Trinidad has every reason to be celebratory right now. Every reason in the world. But wait a second, now the Haynes brothers getting back into the ring here, but Trinidad trying to fight him off, and this is what I'm talking about. Trinidad... His, he needed to be prepared for this, and wait a second, Trey Haynes is back on his feet. And now the Haynes brothers here starting to commence the attack. Drew off the ropes, that big curve stop. And wait a second, Ryan trying to pull himself up. The referee trying to get some order in here, trying to separate everybody, trying to get the Haynes brothers out of the ring, but they are not leaving here. There we go. This is what needed to happen in the beginning. Wait a second. Ryan with that gut wrench powerbomb. And, oh my God. Another kiss of death here from, from Trey Haynes. And we saw this at the end of strike zone on Thursday. This is what they did to Trinidad, which caused the injuries, caused the bandage to need to be on the body. And look at this, the kiss of death there from Trey Haynes. There we go. Beat him down, boys. That's it. See, this is what should have happened in the beginning of the Royal Rumble. But you see, the, the Haynes brothers have all been eliminated. They've all been, and look at this, now the Haynes are leaving the ring. But my question is, who's entering 30? Well, I don't know. You got all the numbers over there. Well, I, I, I don't know exactly who's the entrance. Calculate. Get your calculator out. They're, they're, I, 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 can't, I can't calculate it. You know, it's, it's, it's at random, but I recognize the theme song. It's been a couple years since I've heard this. And ladies and gentlemen, number 30. The man that Die Hard, you know, put into early retirement, but apparently he is back. Entrance, number 30. The man that we should all be happy to see. This man, Damian Gamer, number 30. The guy that's going to be hyped up and everyone else is going to be downplayed again. No, because at this juncture, now the real question remains. Can Trinidad do it? Can he go the full distance? We now know that entrant 30 is Damian Gamer. And Damian Gamer looking like he's in great shape here. He's had the past two years to get ready for this. Or the past year and a half or whatever. And Trinidad has been in this rumble for over an hour, ladies and gentlemen. Over an hour. Do you think? Who do you who's your who's your vote here? Trinidad or Gamer? Trinidad. You're pulling for Trinidad? Alright. As much as I don't want Trinidad to win, I'm just gonna go against the guy that you're I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm almost wanting to agree with you at this juncture. I don't mind who don't. wins between these two. Don't agree with me. Wow. Don't 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 agree. I think Trinidad could do this, but he's taken a lot of damage. He's taken a ton of damage tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And, and we're getting ready, and I mean, this. look at the stare down here. Trinidad and Gamer. These are the final two in the breakdown rumble. 
Gamer was thinking about it there if he wanted to get into the ring. Gamer has not officially entered the Breakdown Rumble yet. Gamer almost to that official point. And now it's official. Gamer's in the Breakdown Rumble. And here we go. Big back chop from Trinidad there. And Gamer firing back. And one, one strike from Gamer. And, and Trinidad was already groggy. And, oh, big right hand there. And another big right hand. And this is what I'm talking about, you know, like, in this situation, you know, I mean, Gamer clearly has the advantage. You know, I mean, Trinidad's been in here for over an hour. He's got Trinidad up on his shoulders. Trinidad's, what? Wait, say it again? Trinidad has been in this matchup for over an hour. No, he's been laying down for over an hour, okay? He's been taking nippy naps, okay? He's been rejuvenating. He's been cheating his way to the top. But just a few moments ago, you saw the Haynes brothers tear him apart. Oh, couple little bumps and bruises. He, he'll, he'll get through. That's nothing compared to what I happen to make. Oh, and a, a big right hand there from Gamer. Gamer's doing a lot of body shots here to Trinidad. I mean, he's not... He's not pulling any punches in that sense. And, oh, the big spine buster there. And that's not going to do the ribs any favor. And look at... Look at Gamer. Gamer looks game tonight. He, he came prepared. He's got a very good entry spot at number 30. And he, now he's able to pick apart the, the number one entrant. I mean, this has never happened before in TPP or FFW history. Entering at number one and lasting all the way until the end. It's never happened. I did it one time. It's an organization not heard of, though. I, I did it. Okay, did you win? That doesn't matter. Okay? I don't want to lose. Oh, okay. I thought you said that wins and losses are the only thing that mattered. The numbers don't it, matter. See, a negative work environment is not good. You need to be more positive. Gamer run or Trinidad runs in with a big flop kick. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm super excited. This is it. You know, there's of course there's what? nobody else to come out. There's nobody else. One of these men are going to face Jerry Graham at FFWX for the FFW Championship. And Gamer going off the ropes, but oh, and a big elbow there. Yeah, he... <sighs> are you still going with the same prediction of, of Gamer winning? Uh, I, I... Or, I mean, Trinidad know, winning? See, you're, you're even confused. You don't even know what I picked. See, you're not even paying attention to what I'm saying. Let me tell you. I don't want Trinidad to win, but you got really excited about this, 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 this uh, uh... Damien? Uh, Gamer? No, Damien yeah, that, Gamer. Okay, Gamer guy. You got really excited about him. So I want, I want, I want, I want the Trent to win, okay? Hashtag Trent on Twitter. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, don't forget you can use the hashtag FFW Breakdown to get involved with uh, the conversation and, and voice your opinion on who you think's going to win the Breakdown Rumble as, uh, Trinidad here... Although he's been in this matchup as long as he has, and he's taken as much damage as he has, he's still giving it everything he can. Have a little and, bit of technical issues right now with the uh, Trinidad with a big spine uh, buster there, but it's okay. There we go. Look, look at, look at, look at Trent. Look at, look at. See, Trent is a natural born athlete. I was against him at first, but now I'm starting to see that he will do anything it takes to win. If that means taking a nap during during Rumble, that's what he has to do. I don't think he took no. a nap. And look at this big German suplex there from Gamer. And you know, let me tell you this: while you were while you were doing calculus numbers and texting and tweeting to Die Hard, I was looking at the bigger side of the ring. Okay, I was looking at the other side, the bigger cave, what was happening. The crime of being committed, and he was committing a crime, taking a nap, sleeping on the job. I don't, I don't think Trinidad was sleeping. I think he was trying to compensate for his wounds. Yeah, that's what they say when you're taking, that's what they all say when you're taking a nap. I'm tired, I'm hurt, I'm sore, yeah, sleep. Well, he took a lot of damage, you know, a lot of damage. And, oh, a big standing drop kick there from Damian Gamer. Like I said, if I wasn't injured, I would go in there and throw them both out, and I would go on to do bigger and better things. Well, Gamer might be looking to put Trinidad away here. Gamer sending Trinidad into the ropes, and, oh, a missed clothesline. And, oh, wait a second, Gamer, vintage Gamer with that clothesline turning Trinidad inside out. If Gamer wins this, I'll give you 
Well, if, if Trinidad wins this, I'll give you $100. All right, you're on. Don't lose, nerd. I think, I think I'm about to be $150 richer. Oh. See, you always have to out... You always have to, always have to outdo me with numbers. I say 50, you say $150. Always have to outdo me. You just can't let me have one win. Well, look at... Look at Trinidad, though. I mean, he's fighting here, and Trinidad is showing he's got what it takes. Tr Trinidad with the whiplash. Wow. I see what the Trent is doing. I see what he's doing. Wow. Trinidad is hanging in here. That's what he is doing right now. He is hanging in here, ladies and gentlemen. And anybody who ever doubted if Trinidad was a main event competitor, this is your answer right here. Oh, and a standing super kick from Gamer. Trinidad has all the, the applicable skills that anybody in the main event would need. And Trinidad, it looks like Trinidad's trying to crawl towards the ropes. And Gamer's just pacing in the ring here. Now we're currently panning to uh, through the crowd, but Gamer is patiently awaiting Trinidad to stand back up. I'm interested to see what's, what's about to happen here, ladies and gentlemen. Trinidad... Trying to pull himself back to his feet. Brett using the ropes to pull himself up. And Gamer here running in. Oh my god, and Darren Trinidad been, has been eliminated by Damian Gamer. Gamer has officially won the FFW breakdown. Wait, whoa, 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 what? He won? He has officially won. He just eliminated Darren Trinidad over I, the top. I, I saw that. I just didn't believe what I saw. Gamer has done. I mean, I, I can't take anything away from Trinidad because he did something unimaginable. I mean, he went he went the distance. No matter how you look at it, he went the distance. He lasted till the very end through the beatdown from the Haynes brothers, through the excessive force used from Extreme. But Gamer able to close the deal, to seal the deal. Gamer has a date with Destiny. His former tag team partner, former faction member, Jerry Grant, it's going to be Gamer versus Graham at FFWX. Ugh. Gamer stepped up tonight. Now, I would have loved to have seen Darren Trinidad win, get one more opportunity to face, you know, Jerry Graham, but I can't take anything away from him. I can't take anything away from, away from Gamer. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you very much for tuning in to FFW Breakdown tonight. We are out of time. I've been your host, Christopher Billings, alongside JDL. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to tune in on Monday for FFW Genesis. Congratulations to Damian Gamer, the winner of the 2016 FFW Breakdown Rumble. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen.